The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93X. A drive to left. Back and gone. Carlos Correa's signature moment in his year and a half. For the Twins. Slap to left center field. Might split the gap. Morneau around second on his way to third. He scored from first the other night on a double. And he'll score here. And the Twins take a 1-0 lead. A drive to left field. Are you kidding me? Wow. The most electric moment at Target Field in years. Deep to right field. Gone. A walk-off home run for Morneau. Three, two, one. It's showtime. Oh, where the hell is my microphone? Here it is. <laughs> where the hell did the microphone go? Here it is. All right. Hello and welcome to the 93 X Half Fast Morning Show. Boy, that was some cool stuff there in the intro, Cubby. Yeah, I'm looking forward to having Dick back today. It's awesome. You know, a lot of people will feel the same way. Once he uh, left BSN, people were texting saying, well, what's going to happen to the show? Is he not going to be on anymore? And we didn't really know at first. No, we didn't know Jack Squat. Until um, someone was nice enough to buy us a cameo for our 25th anniversary of the show from Dick Bramer. He said some nice stuff and announced, which unbeknownst to us, that he was going to be back this year. So we're pretty pumped. That was pretty cool the way he did that. Left us hanging for months on end. <laughs> well, I don't think he knew. He left us hanging, mm-hmm. and it uh, probably is going to affect our relationship going forward. Yeah, we got a lot of company this morning, and part of that setup will be Dick Bramer. First off, uh, the Norwegian Fox, Janelle Klein, going to stop in for a visit. Uh... A little later on, our doctor friend, James Parnell, some of you call him Dr. P. Jesus, he'll also be getting involved, and he'll be taking health-related questions from our listening audience if he's got a problem. And then at 7.30 this morning, all-time great play-by-play man, Dick Bramer, will be swinging by to talk Twins baseball for the first time this season. What a deal that is. We're some lucky bastards. We, we know, are. We, yes. know, we, we know some cool people. And they, and they like us. That's just weird. Odd. That's the weirdest <laughs> part. I, I'm not sure how that all played out, but they like us. Well, they like Josh and I. <laughs> <laughs> they tolerate the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> no, they don't, really. Yeah. <laughs> they actually, they don't. But you guys are good enough that... Uh... To keep them coming back. Uh, it's great. You're right, Nick. We're very lucky. We're I think some lucky douchebags. All of the athletes we've had in the last, boy, for as long as I can remember, really, have been awesome. We've gotten very lucky. That's not always the case. No. You get a little nervous sometimes Absolutely. when they first come on. So is the Van Halen dreams because having Dick Bramer on the show is a dream come true? You know, it worked perfect for this morning. But no, this is a request by our friend Rosalie, who has a birthday today. And she had requested uh, one of a couple songs. This was one of them, and it just seemed to fit the intro very nicely. It's Rosalie's birthday today. It is. I know somebody who's got a birthday coming up tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Me and I too. bet he does not want us to talk about it. <laughs> nope, I noticed he got real silent one yeah. second. <laughs> and I bet he wanted everyone to forget about he it. He didn't want anyone to talk about it, so we're not going to talk about it. Maybe we'll talk about it tomorrow, no, but no, we're not no, going to no. talk about it today. We, we're too busy tomorrow. <laughs> Man. We won't have time for that. But we know some pretty cool people. I wish I could have been a scorching hot blonde television star or a uh, big money doctor or a a legendary baseball play-by-play announcer. I wish I could have become one of those things. I wasn't motivated as a kid. Yeah, I, you or, know, I kind of was. Or as a young adult. I wasn't motivated as a kid or as a young adult. It took me a little while. You were a motivated kid? Uh, you know, I as far as I thought I was going to be a rock guitar player, whether that was in a band or just as a studio musician, one of the two. I really thought, I mean, I worked really hard at that. And then all of a sudden, Nirvana came along, killed everything I loved, and it just wasn't the same for me. Well, he's, it's, he's not lying. 
and there really is nothing funny about the man having everything. <laughs> I don't understand what's funny. We're playing dreams. My dreams were crushed <laughs> as a young man. About my friend having his dreams murdered in the streets. We got guys over there. <laughs> yes, smells like teen spirit. Might have, well, just walked up to... Uh, Walked up to Kip Winger and shot him in the head. Just, yeah. He should have just walked around and just took out all those bands that I loved. They were a joke all of a sudden. <laughs> all of a sudden, they were a joke. And I thought, ah, maybe this isn't for me. For guys like Cubby, who were aspiring hard rock guitar players, the song Smells Like Team Spirit might as well have been called Shove Your Dreams Up Your Ass. Yeah, <laughs> oh. really. I'll never forgive Nirvana for, for, for such things. Well, because at that time it was like, <laughs> you know how to play your instrument? You are a dork. It just wasn't cool to know how to play your instrument. But you were, you were, I've grown to appreciate Nirvana, though. I haven't. And I really like Foo Fighters. <laughs> I hate the Foo Fighters. You, uh, you, but you would describe yourself as a motivated kid. Wow, I, I'm impressed by just that. Just that, for that one thing. I just mean, like, for, the, for the guitar. Yeah, it was... Very narrow-minded. I stayed Maybe that's up. the wrong way to put it. I just had a sight on that. Oh, well, the, what, narrow, no. Narrow-minded isn't the word that makes you sound like you were. You had a singular goal that you were headed for. No backup plan, nothing. But still, that was something. Yeah, that was my, that was my dream. I had nothing. Nothing going for myself as a young person or even as a young adult. I just, I was so, I stayed. I, <coughs> sorry, I dried up. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this, so... My senior year of high school, um, we had a music teacher. He was great. He was awesome. And by the way, thank you for laughing at the fact that my vo- What's with the people <laughs> yeah. on the other side oh, of the... your dreams are dead. Oh, you're choking no. to death. Yeah, and everyone over there is just... <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Go ahead. On. You were saying something about music. Nick hates it when people laugh at other people's misery or take great joy <laughs> in it. And here you guys are doing it. A bunch of ice-cold bastards. <laughs> but, so this music teacher is like, hey, you know, if you're in a rock band... You're going to have to travel. And I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't consider that. Uh, I don't like traveling. So he said, well, why don't you consider being a studio musician? You can just stay here, go into the studio every once in a while. And, you know, like uh, you'd have to. That, though, was way more difficult, he told me. Because you got to learn how to play a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just. uh, Your same songs. Well, now someone just texted in. Well, how'd you get into radio? Don't start trouble. Uh, we've already had a bad start to the day for me personally. Don't start trouble. Ask questions like that. How'd I get into radio? That's just looking to send my blood pressure even higher. <laughs> uh, what else is going on around here? I don't know. Dick Bramer, Janelle Klein, and Dr. P. What a crowd. Dick Bramer's just a calming... Pro- well, so is Janelle, really. But Dick Bramer, it's so nice having him on. And every every Tuesday, uh, we get him for 20 Tuesdays during the season. So we can... 20 uh, of them. We get to look forward to that. All right. All right. That is pretty sweet. Maybe if the Twins go into the postseason, we can get a little mm-hmm. more. I guess we'll find out. That would be, be wonderful. Awesome. Is that on the table? Does anybody know? Uh, yeah. I mean, we did last year. We extended it last season once we uh, made that little run. That was fun. Yeah, there's always a, a phone call we could make. You know what I mean? I mean, and I and I know my coworkers well enough to know if it's not going to work out, they'll laugh. Our coworkers will yes, laugh at will. that. <laughs> they'll see how disappointed we are because it's not their problem. No, really, they'll, they'll find it hilarious. They're just kind of yep. kind of sitting there, you know, waiting for things to happen. It's just the peanut gallery over here. Yeah, it's a pretty big day. We uh, we love our friends. This actually will be. A momentous occasion for one of our friends. Dr. P has never met Janelle. And I usually he's on every other Monday. And all of a sudden he says, oh, I can't come on Monday. I'll come on Tuesday. Is Janelle going to be there? Oh, weird. <laughs> weird how that worked out. Are there enough seats? I mean, she could sit on my lap. Ha ha, I'm just kidding. But I'd really like to meet her. That's pretty much the text exchange. <laughs> I'm, I'm really not exaggerating. That's pretty much how it went. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. If those two ended up being a couple... Oh, would we have uh, some fun with that? Dr. P. Jesus and Janelle by damn Klein. Um, And if Dr. P. can't get it done, probably once a week I have a buddy ask me about Janelle. (laughs) Of course. Some of them are single and some of them are married. (laughs) But they ask me, so what's the deal with Janelle? Going to bring her around sometime? She going to stop by the Legion? Can I come in studio and meet her once a week? Uh, I don't know. What no. was that? Was that last weekend I went to a birthday party? Yeah, uh, last weekend. A friend of mine had a big 50th birthday party. 
I walked into a room where folks were drinking, and my brother and one of my oldest friends were arguing over who had the right to ask Janelle out on a date. <laughs> um, my buddy's argument was, well, my brother's argument was, hey, um, you know, they were going to go through me, of course. They were going to ask me. Sure, you're the connection. Right. They, I'm the connection. I'm the middleman. They were going to ask me to somehow set up a date between them between them and Janelle, right? So my brother's argument was, well, of course, I'm the first choice. I'm his brother. My I buddy, understand that. Yeah. Sure. Sure. That, that That's a pretty decent argument. My buddy's side of the coin was... He has chest hair. No, that's a long <laughs> seventh grade story there. Wouldn't that be something if, <laughs> as a grown man, <laughs> you're in your you're in your fifties and uh, the level of chest hair that you can grow decides on. Uh, what, but anyway, my 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 friend's argument was okay, fine. You're Nick's brother, but he never liked you. <laughs> uh, that is I, also I, a good point. Yes, yeah. uh, he's my, my buddy said I have been. Uh, I'm sorry to refer myself in the third person, but it makes the story more clear. My buddy was saying, I've been Nick's true friend, and I've never turned on him. I've never been violent with him, where you, his own brother, has not been such a good person. So I had to walk in and say, I don't know if I would do that favor for either one of you is the way you're acting right now. Yeah, Um, that's a tough call. They even proposed maybe coming on air and competing for her. <laughs> oh, my God. We, we should do that. That'd be awesome. That would be well, funny. I mean, it's, of course, if it's okay with Janelle, that one of the first things I said to the boys was, hey, look, this isn't a prize cow, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she has some say in this, you know. Um, we'd have to clear it. Well, of course, you guys know my brother and uh, the, the, the buddy of mine who wants, uh, well, I, I shouldn't give it away. I, right. I'm not going to give it away. Would he, is he the type of guy that would give you his shirt off his back? It's not that type of... Okay. okay it's not that guy. Not that guy. Josh is... Because I, I have received a shirt off his back, literally. Yes. You're talking about the big Al. Yeah. Uh, Josh walked into the Legion one night, and how did that work? I just said, I love your shirt. And oh, he said, yeah. oh, do you want it? And he took it off and just oh, gave nice. it to me. <laughs> so now we got a, a shirtless, uh, red-haired kid, uh, my buddy Al. Walking, I love Well, he wasn't Al. a kid. He was 45 years old. But anyway, he's shirtless now. Um... Maybe we can get this going. The other guy, you know him too, Josh, and uh, I mean, I-, I think they'd probably... Is he the type of guy that would buy you a Shirley Temple? No. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how much competition your brother has. <laughs> the level of competition. Is he... <laughs> Making uh... references to some of my other pals. Yeah. My, my buddy House went by, you know, House has a lady. Oh, he does. Okay, yeah. so uh, that, that was going to be a follow-up question. Does she? D- does he have somebody already? This friend of mine. Yeah, yeah, but he's he's uh he's willing to ditch that. Is he? Ma- <laughs> is it a marriage? No, he's not okay. married. All right, but he would easily drop what he's got cooking now for a shot to go on one date with Janelle Klein. He would. So the idea of Janelle marrying Doctor P, Doctor James. Marrying? Clark. We're talking marrying. Oh, getting, getting, sorry, I don't know why that was on my mind. I, I was looking way ahead in the future. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you want long term? Yeah, I passed out for a second. I thought I woke up in 2026. It's not Rocket Jesus, who I'm both intimidated by and enamored with. She says Janelle Parnell. That's got a nice ring to it. Oh. it does. <laughs> How about that? So, yeah, I mean, once a week, somebody has something to say about Jungle Jane. And who can blame them? What the hell is going on? <laughs> this is great. Boy, some of you listen real close. You know, Josh has made a couple references to my buddies trying to figure out which one of them wants to date Janelle. Is he the kind of guy that would take, you know, give you the shirt off his back? No, it ain't Big Al. Is, what? It the, is it the kind of a guy who uh, would buy you a Shirley Temple? No, it ain't house. He's got live-in ass. Here's a uh, listener, Butcher's Hack Jesus. Is he half man and half something else? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Nice. It's not Merzo. So, I mean, I, it's not half man, half a Merzing. All those would be great competition. Oh, yeah. For your brother. I mean, I think your brother has a lot to offer. <laughs> well, I do. Yeah. I think he'd be some pretty tough competition. He'd be tough to beat. Yeah. He's funny. Oh, he's funny. I think he's good looking. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. big. He's, you know, he's a tall drink of water. Okay. 
Does this? Hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. Okay, he's big. <laughs> You, you, I'll, I'll agree with that. You don't think he's a good-looking guy? No, a good-looking guy? No, yeah. no. Anybody, and, and fine. Be, yeah, he's, he's a handsome dude. No, he is not. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you funny and big. <laughs> <laughs> he's not good-looking. He's a big, broken oaf. Uh, I don't think so at all. <laughs> a stupid look on his face all the time? Hell no, he ain't good-looking. Does this friend of yours that wants to go on the date with Janelle, could his hair be described as a tail? Oh, God, now you're talking about squirrel? Yeah. No, it ain't squirrel. <laughs> I love this. I love this. And, uh, and listeners are texting, and no, it's not Donnie either. Oh. It ain't Donnie. I, Donnie is, is it, a great guest, though. Is it that SOB yeah. Dean? It ain't Dean. Oh, no. It ain't Donnie. <laughs> Dean would have already been, you know, he would have had a relationship with Janelle at this point, if it were Dean. Dean would have dated Janelle. When she was in eighth grade and he was 26 years old. That's what, you know, some small town type of thing. You know yeah. how they used to do that? She wouldn't small... be able to help it. No. Ah, uh, man. No, my brother? I'll go along with a lot of things, but I'm not going along with good looking. God dang. I have to respectfully, respectfully, I say, disagree. Now I got to tell that friggin' story about how I almost knocked out one of my beer league hockey playing teammates i almost knocked them out at a wedding this has got to be 25 years ago we were still young bucks and i was playing beer league hockey my brother never really he only played a handful of games with us he just uh he didn't he didn't take the beer league hockey but he would fill in once in a while and get in a horrible fight and get ejected immediately mm-hmm. he, he couldn't keep his temper in check and he would quickly get thrown out of most games, which was kind of comical. <laughs> I bet that was fun to watch. Ah, <laughs> uh, God. And, all, and also, seeing how he uh, he wasn't regularly playing, you know, beer league hockey, he didn't have, you know, a bag of, of decent gear. You know, he had to kind of, whenever we said, hey, dude, we need a player today, he'd have to piece things together from pulling stuff out of the rafters. Where, <laughs> yeah. where, where the hell are my skates? Where are my gloves? So he would show up and he'd have... You know, okay, he'd have a, a stick and some and a pair of skates, but he'd be wearing Zubas. You know what I'm talking about? You know when you have someone fill in on your yep. beer league oh, team, yeah. and it's like, well, well obviously yep. you haven't played in decades. Yeah, he's wearing Zubas and they a, got the old school gloves and everything. You know, they tie to your wrist. He's got the uh, Cooper XL7 yep. helmet, yep. and for you, uh, there are older people, yep. and you know what a Cooper XL7? It only lasted like a year. It was like a weird helmet that it, kids were getting brain injuries all over the. <laughs> Anyway, so my brother, would he only showed up periodically for beer league hockey. So he never really met this teammate of mine, who I also talk about on the radio quite a bit, Calvin. So I knew Calvin for a couple years before my brother ever met him through beer league hockey. Ends up, we're all at a wedding reception together. And Calvin is standing in a circle of people. You know how you do at a wedding reception. And he's meeting some people and and this and that. And Calvin had met my brother briefly already at this reception. So I went to get a round of beers. I come back even with a beer in my hand for Calvin. And I walk up behind him. I'm a young guy. I'm all excited. It's a wedding reception. We're going to get hammered. Probably try to get some ass. And I walk up behind Calvin. He doesn't know I'm back there. And I overhear Calvin say... Yeah, you know, I even met Nick's brother. It's hard to believe those guys are twins. I mean, Nick's brother is so good looking. <laughs> and I, Focus. And I was just like in a sitcom. You know, there I am. I'm standing behind him with one beer for me and one beer that I bought for Cal. And I'm I'm debating whether I should dump his beer over the top of it. <laughs> and I and I, I just I did one of these. I was like, <clears throat> and he turns around and he realizes what he just said in front of me and it strained our I didn't pass him the puck for about three months <laughs> <laughs> strained so our dramatic. I don't know how why, how could he say something yeah, why like would that you, why would a guy say something like that <laughs> I'm, well, it's okay think, not to say I, I, stuff well, I, sometimes I got over it I, I after three months or so I, I and I still love the man he's one of my favorite people in the whole world but that was that was tough not only to hear someone say that behind your back but also it's just how you would assume my brother is better looking than me is insane. 
Was there something wrong with you? You got something wrong with your vision? Well, the fact that he was shocked, that's insulting. Yeah. Yeah. So it was insulting, and also it's just straight up not true. And it's never been, there's never been a point in our lives where my brother has been better looking to me. <laughs> Ever. It's good to have confidence. I love picturing him sitting in front of the net. Nikki, give me the puck. Give me the puck. I got a wide open net. I ain't giving you jack squat. My brother's probably better looking than me. No, he is not. Uh, well, I, honestly, I think so. But, you know, he's... He's a little shorter, so I win that battle. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's something. Your brother's kind of got a fat ass. Does he really? Yeah. Uh, I got to yeah. look. He's I, got too much ass. Does he have too yeah. much ass? Yeah. Too much. <laughs> Tell me his other flaws. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a. He's got too big of an ass. Okay. Yeah. People are guessing now. Uh, this guy who want this buddy of yours who wants to take Janelle on a date is he from across the street? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not Pistol Pete from across the street. It is not Curtis. Curtis is married. I knew it wouldn't be Curtis. He's got a wife and a pile of kids, ass deep in diapers. He used to say. Ooh, can he spell the word Y? That dude I haven't seen in okay. decades. Okay. The dude who misspelled the word Y, I haven't seen him in decades. Are you willing to give any hint at all? Is he named after a recreational device that maybe somebody would have at their home? <laughs> and sitting it in the winter, you hopefully talk- with, <laughs> with a bunch of bikini, bikini-wearing bikini ladies. You talking about hot tub? Hot tub. No, oh. it ain't hot tub. It's not hot tub. Hot tub's got a wife and kids. He lives up in this one. Okay, I knew Christ he lived Jesus. far away. Oh. He lives in this, or what, what do you call that resort yeah. up there? Breezy Point. Breezy he lives Point, up there. Yeah. No, it ain't hot tub. I got uh, shamed at Breezy Point once. Tell me about when you were shamed at Breezy Point. I went to a wedding with a friend, and um, it was far chillier than I had anticipated. And oh. I I like hoodies. I'm wearing one right now. It's mm-hmm. brand new. Nobody commented mm-hmm. on it yet. And I, uh, I bought a Breezy Point hoodie, and then we go to this little party, and a guy shamed me for buying a hoodie at the place we were. And oh, I think he hell? said... That's, I was confused by the same season. guy. Probably thinks yeah, my brother's what? better looking than I am. Well, th- <laughs> that's this, rude. This guy just kind of screamed douchebag, but he's like, "Oh, there's a guy that's not afraid of buying a hoodie at the place he's staying." I'm like, "Well, yeah, I'm not afraid of buying a hoodie no. at the place I don't understand." Yeah, yeah. That, doesn't that's matter to me. Kind doesn't... of the point. <laughs> it's like, I don't understand the criticism. <laughs> they sell them here. That's yeah. what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Where am I supposed to get it? <laughs> and it was a sweet hoodie, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a guy that's jealous. There's a guy that's jealous yep. of a guy in a hoodie. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go down to Disney World and buy a Breezy Point sweatshirt. <laughs> 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 Kidney Stone Jesus has a good question about this whole, you know, trying to set Janelle up with one of Nick's friends or brother. Has anyone checked if this dating game is okay as Ric Flair? Because, you uh, know. I bet Ric Flair has forgotten at this oh, point yeah. about Janelle. He's he's had a lot of Janelle's sense. Yeah. yeah. That's no a, offense to Janelle. Yeah, of course not. Of course no. not. He's Ric mm-hmm. Flair. You know, I mean, he's the nature he boy. Probably falls in love quite a bit. Yes, he he doesn't get hung up on any one woman because he know in a matter of minutes I'm gonna meet another one. Mm-hmm. You know he's what just I mean? Go to the next city. I can't give you too much of a hint to, on this other guy, uh, Josh, um, because really, honestly, his current girlfriend has no idea how quickly. <laughs> he would toss her into the trash can mm. uh, for a shot at oh, Jupiter Jane. Gotcha. I don't want anyone getting in a knife fight tonight or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want any waves created either. And it also could be me. Well, you're married. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, well, you said girlfriend. Oh, your wife would I be got cool a wife with it, but girlfriend. the girlfriend... Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got a... okay. Oh. Yeah. I understand. It the took me a second. My wife's not going to... Ever... She wouldn't be bothered if I told her it's over today. Oh. She would. She's got a lot going for her. She don't need me. Uh, my girlfriend is a little more reliant upon me. Uh, so that's me versus my brother in a battle to the death. And the prize, if she accepts, Janelle Klein. Maybe that's how it's going to work out. I can't give you any more information. You know, Janelle's never given us any insight into her dating life. I love that about her. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Well, she she doesn't trust us with that information. Well, she tells me things. She does not. She does not. She uh, doesn't share it. She's told me she doesn't like to share. I know. I, I know things. <laughs> There's a few people in the listening audience that are volunteering their services to come in and uh, nope. have a dating game with Janelle if Janelle's interested. It's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, no. But it's cute. 
it's cute that you would be in the running. You could dream. That, that you think you could, but it's not going to happen. It's not. Oh, hell no, it ain't Wang. <laughs> <laughs> Buck nuts, Jesus. Good guess, but it ain't Wang. Oh, my. Wang would not be able to form a word. <laughs> he would be stuck. I love a good Wang story. Yeah, Wang's got some cool stuff going on. <laughs> he used to be buff. Wang? Wang. Mm. All right, what else is going on? We better just get moving because we got lots to do today. We don't want to be running late for Dick Bramer or anything like that. Not on our first visit of the year. No, that'd be bad. That'd be rude. And, uh, you know, Klein and Dr. P. So, uh, man, free car wash on the way into work. Oh, my oh, God. It wasn't raining. Oh, I when hate I came driving in, in the rain. Well, you always come in at 1 o'clock in the morning. Oh, well, yeah, I missed it. I missed all the fun. The free Although I car will say, wash. usually... At least going in my direction, I never see anybody. There's, but today it was kind of busy out there. I suppose folks wanted to get in early before uh, things get worse. Yeah. But yeah, thank you to people texting in saying, you know, warn people to be careful that it's getting pretty slick. Is it? Did you guys have any issues in no. that? Yeah, um, I, I no, I didn't either. But I did notice it, like on my way in, with about 20 minutes, it dropped two degrees. So oh my yeah, once it God. once it gets colder. It's like the, the roads day are not going to be nice. It's like the day after tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. It dropped two degrees. Yeah, that's a, either a disaster movie or a, a ghost movie. One of the two. Uh, no, it's just it, it was a free car wash, raining like hell, uh, which was fine by me. My vehicle could use it, but it was wet, Cubby, wet. Yeah, I'm coming I'm ho- on like a turbo vet. Hmm. Hopefully, it came here. I definitely needed a car wash. Yeah. All right, let's. Uh, Push forward. We got to take a break. We'll be right back on the program ski. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. Ninety-three X. Grace here, customer service rep at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Our customers are our top priority, whether that's providing same-day service or solving a cooling issue for that addition on your home. Ashley, tell our listeners about this month's AC specials. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. Just Capital is a nonprofit that tracks which companies are a force for good. Companies like Bank of America, which just earned the Just Capital seal. Bank of America is ranked number one for ongoing commitment to their workers with initiatives like Sharing Success, which awarded 97% of their teammates additional compensation, nearly all in stock. This is the program's seventh consecutive year, awarding more than $4.8 billion in total. Visit JustCapital.com to learn how a just business is a better business. Furnished by Just Capital. Stupid news on the half-assed morning show. Let me get back to some text messages here real quick, if you don't mind. We were having a fun conversation. Uh, Here's the deal. My brother and a good buddy of mine were arguing the other night at a beer party about which of them deserves to be set up by me on a date with Janelle Klein, if in fact she's interested, which is a friggin' long shot, okay? <laughs> if in fact she's interested. These two got my brother and this buddy of mine were arguing. Well, who deserves to have me set them up? Uh, and it's been really fun because I, I do talk a lot about my derelict pals on this radio program. It's amazing how much some of you remember. Listeners have been guessing which pal of mine it is that wants to date Janelle. Uh, You know, one of them said, uh, is he named after a home relaxation device that features uh, jets and bubbles? No, it ain't Hot Tub. Is he from across the street? No, it ain't Pistol Pete. Is he a big guy, a big, strong guy? No, it ain't Big Al. And it ain't Donnie. But here are a couple more guesses. Does this guy's brother play in the National Hockey League? No, it ain't Jordan Parisi. He's got a wife and a little baby. (laughs) Did I show you pictures of his baby? I saw, yeah. He sent me some. Did he? Yeah. Looks Adorable. Just, it looks just like a Parisi. Yeah, it does. Little girl. Yep. And his wife is a missile. <laughs> An absolute, to steal a term from Jordan himself, his wife is a missile. He ain't looking for a date with you now. Uh, one more guess. Is this buddy of yours up in the tree dressed as a ninja? No, I hope not. <laughs> I hope it's not that guy. The deer oh. cut. It ain't that guy. <laughs> Were you guys even friends? 
No. Yeah, I didn't. We I knew each other. Call. We weren't friends. It's a reference to a junior high story where there was a kid at my school who would dress as a ninja and hide in uh, in a tree, and then as we would walk by on our way to school, he would say, "Hey." <laughs> And he'd usually have a throwing star or something in his hand, that right? Or a set cool. of nunchucks. And he'd say, hey, I could have killed you. <laughs> I, I might have went out of my way to become friends with that kid because I would be afraid that one day he'd actually kill me. Seems like the kind of guy you'd want to have on your side yeah, when exactly. things hit the fan. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we've been lucky enough to be friends with the real psychopaths in this building. You know, the ones that you should be afraid of. I was just talking to a buddy. All oh, right. We have befriended the real serious psychos. Yeah. yeah that's it's, smart. It's the way to go. I mean, not really strategically, but it's just kind of worked out. I was just talking to a buddy of mine the other day about that. Yeah, we, it wasn't on purpose. <laughs> no, we just got along with them. Good. And it was an engineer in particular who uh, I do miss. Uh, he would come in here pretty much daily. He would kick the studio door open. <laughs> And he Scare was the hell out of you. Oh, yeah. He's an intimidating guy anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, not necessarily just by looking at him, but his personality. And he always would say the same thing. What the F did you effers F up this time? Uh-huh. Same thing every time he came in. <laughs> and then he'd talk trash about all the people in the building he'd like to kill. Oh. We were not on that list, thankfully. Yeah. Dana, you were, and you didn't even work here. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> he was prepared. He knew I, what was to come. It's before we even knew you. He, uh, he, he was, yeah, he exactly. I was on his radar. Yeah, Ashley, I could have seen you back in the day up in the tree with that ninja dude. <laughs> <laughs> He'd say, could have killed you. And then Ashley would say, I could have too. <laughs> yeah. Holding a... What were, what were these things, Josh? Nunchucks? No, no, no. Uh, butterfly knife? Butterfly knife. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go with the stupid news. I got an article in my hand here from a website called The Daily Star. Uh, they're English. And the article is from start to finish a sampling of complaints made by well hung men. Fellas talking about the negatives of having a damn baby arm in their pants. Now, I doubt Josh or Wapple or Dana or I are featured in this report because number one, as I already mentioned, this website is English. And reason number two is that it's not in our nature to complain. <laughs> not at all. Not I was us. just bitching about that the other day to a good <laughs> buddy of mine. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, my God. All right. Yeah, everybody feels so bad for guys with giant penises. You know, it's, yep. Yeah, they, they deserve it. They deserve to, uh, our condolences. First off, okay, this article, complaints made by well-hung men. No wonder people used to wipe their asses with articles like this back when they were in newspaper form. How stupid. <laughs> it's it is so stupid. It is pretty stupid. <laughs> But you know what the hell? We'll, we'll talk about it. I guess we we got nowhere else to be. We clicked on it. Yeah, we. <laughs> yeah. It says here, I'm sure everyone that saw it was like, "This is so dumb." Click, <laughs> right. read, read, read. Stupid. That was stupid. Yeah. Rabbit hole. Rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to all my friends. <laughs> Back in the day when these were magazine and newspaper articles, no wonder people just wiped their asses with it in a fish house, but whatever. We'll go ahead with it. Uh, sometimes being hung like a Belgian plow elk comes with its downsides. They mention some soccer playing dork, of course. They treat soccer like it's a real sport <laughs> in uh, England. A goalkeeper called Tony Warner apparently was hauling around something just awful. You familiar, Dana? You're a soccer fan. No, I don't, I don't recognize that name. He was carrying around something just disgusting during his <laughs> playing days. One of his teammates went ahead and said, quote, it's the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's lethal. He should have a shotgun license <laughs> for it. Okay, so I guess one of the negatives is that your bros make smart-ass comments. Not, not that most dudes would mind. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I, don't mm-hmm. I think most men would, yeah. <clears throat> and then uh, here we go with this effing guy again. I- I'm trying not to lose my cool over here, Josh. Uh, I thought we had heard the last of this guy. This Jonah Falcon dude. Enough already. 
If this is the first you've heard about this guy, consider yourself lucky. Uh, uh, again, I'm going to go ahead anyway. He claims to have the biggest pecker in the whole entire world. 13 and a half inches with a bone on. It's so unnecessary. Which is great. You know, congratulations. But why can't he just get over it? Mm-hmm. The rest of us are over it. I think he wants a medal. Yeah, what does he want from us? Yeah, I don't he know. wants an award, he yeah. He wants something. I think he loves attention. And the oddest thing about it, Josh, you probably remember this. In the past few years, if ever there was an article written about some dude with a mega rod, right? This Falcon guy would be in there going, well, don't forget about me. Yeah. Hey, I'm still here, guys. Look at it. Yeah, he always had something to say, and, he'd always, and if it was considered bigger he'd always wonder well they must have done so like one guy he said well he hangs stuff on it that's he, not a real yeah, penis he, he stretched his foreskin yeah. uh, to the to the limit dude congrats you're, you're hung <laughs> you like win. a like a friggin elephant just <laughs> let, let us be yeah i think guinness should just give him the award for biggest penis and then he can go away oh, yeah. our biggest pain in the ass that oh, too yeah. cyclops jesus uh, he sent me a photo that says i'm reading this self-help help book at the moment and it's called how to live with a huge penis <laughs> <laughs> advice <laughs> meditations and wisdom for men who have too much i ended up with a copy of that book somehow oh did you really uh-huh it's kind of left us sitting there on the coffee table. Yeah, that's where you got to keep it, right? Mm-hmm. Bathroom. Oh, did I leave that out? Oh, shoot. Sorry. I was just doing some reading earlier. So this Falcon guy is up in this article about big dong troubles. The negatives of carrying massive heat in your shorts. He says he held up the line at the airport security check-in because the airport cops thought his bulge was a bomb or, yeah, or all something. Yeah, right, dude. <laughs> a bomb. All right. I, I really wouldn't want a 13-inch penis, though. I mean, a big Don't. one, that'd be great. But you, you have that, a limit? That, that, that would be too ridiculous. Nobody wants that. No, I wouldn't complain about it, but I still wouldn't want one. Would you go on like Good Morning America to talk about it and no. all the all the news stories and yeah. all the news outlets? Like I'm no, sure I, this guy I would not. I would not. I think you'd get used to it. All right, if you thought Conor McGregor literally was the biggest dick in Ireland, you'd be incorrect. There's a porn star over that away by the name of Andy Lee who says the ten and a half inch red haired shillelagh he kicks around town is quote Ireland's biggest, biggest, biggest. So he says to draw back to his giganta peen is that wherever he goes, folks think they think he has a boner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn. He says uh, he was even accused of going into a job interview with a hard on. Now that's effing funny. <laughs> sir, you can't come in packing heat, <laughs> sir. Sir. <laughs> Here's a guy who really wants to be hired, huh? <laughs> guy showed up to a job interview with a hard on. <laughs> person to the interview points to a sign on the wall that says no boners. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what's one of the pros for you? I just really love business. Really love it. He says my penis is so large that it looks like it's erect. When I walk around people stare. Oh, shut up. His life is so hard. Say what now? <laughs> Listen to this here now. This Andy Lee dude. He says that he opened a university for those interested in having a career in porn. Man, I bet that college basketball team doesn't make the tournament anytime soon. <laughs> no. Nope. Ron Jeremy never struck me as a great athlete. <laughs> well, define athlete. <laughs> well, they probably got stamina. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Elite Eight takes on a completely different meaning. <laughs> So there are the drawbacks of having a big, fat, disgusting, oversized penis swinging between your legs. Your friends bust your chops. You might have to uh, hold up the line at airport security. Uh, And people think you have a bone ski (laughs) even when you don't. I can live with that. See, no, no, that would suck. If people just assume you're the guy that always has a boner. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I'd much rather have some of those other issues. I don't want to be the guy that they think always has a boner. Yeah, you couldn't. You, you lucky couldn't. for me, you couldn't tell if I had a boner if you saw me naked. 
But if I'm just walking around, like, have you ever had your pants bunch up and you think, oh, God, I hope nobody thought that was a boner? It, it was brutal in um, middle school, high school. You know, you'd get a boner and you're like, oh, boy, I need to walk out in the hallway. Please don't ring bell. And then it rings. <laughs> you got to get up. It's got to be quick up, Tuck. Yeah. Everybody knows that schoolhouse boner. <laughs> Those were fun. Well, I fell asleep in class in eighth grade once, and just, I mean, I I pitched a circus tent. That I did. sucks. Congrats. And when I woke up, everybody in the class was sur- gathered around it, <laughs> led by this gal that sat next, sat next to me. She, while I was just... In eighth grade, she... Called everyone over. <laughs> Grabbing kids from the next classroom. Hey, kid, yeah. Yeah, take a look at this. When this I woke up, up she just uh, had this look on her face. It was, you know, one part embarrassing and one part kind of exciting. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my eighth grade boner was the center of attention. It's like a campfire. <laughs> Everyone's sitting cross-legged around <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> Everybody, get over here. Look at this. And this was 1985. I mean, I had the tiny little uh, Ocean Pacific shorts on. Josh knows what I'm talking about. I remember the OP. I mean, my nuts were hanging. The whole works. It was, it was awful. His nuts are already hanging out, but check out that boner. When we were kids, we, we always had our nuts hanging out because of those tiny little shorts that were in fashion at the time. 50 and 60-year-old people know what I'm talking about. We wore the shortest damn shorts. There was always balls swinging around somewhere. <laughs> oh. Yeah, see, the soccer players, especially in those umbros, oh, yeah. they just yeah. pop right out well, there on the, those, on the pitch, mm-hmm. Dana. Yeah, yeah the, the pitch. pitch. At right. least those hung down a little bit. I mean, yeah. the OP, do you even know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I do. The OPs, they barely cleared your bag. See, I went to high school in the 2000s, late 90s, 2000s. It would, and that was the baggy shorts era, you know, where you right. wormed. Yep. It would have been impressive if somebody's balls were hanging on the bottom of those shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Dry age ribeye Jesus wants to know if it was former Vikings tight end Vasante Shienko in that book. Uh, my word, that was a third leg. He said, yes, I was watching that. Local news, they were in the Vikings locker room mm-hmm. after a game, and they clearly showed his penis. <laughs> and there was no way if I were him, I'd be embarrassed by that. <laughs> I was working at K-Fan at the time when we were, it was after the Vikings game, we were doing what was called Fan Line, where people call in and react to the game. The conversation shifted immediately from what happened in the actual game to what happened in the locker room involving Sante Shanko's hog. That was something out. else, wasn't that it? That was impressive. Well, and then uh, Chris Jones, we saw his penis at the Combine. He, he should not be ashamed. I don't know Chris Jones. He's the, during the uh, sprint or whatever yeah, he, was he was doing? Oh, oh yeah. 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 He fell down. You ain't never seen a boner. <laughs> I used to work with that I guy. And girl. That's an old quote from the radio station back in the day. One man actually said to one woman, direct quote, you ain't never seen a boner. I'd tell you the whole story again, but it's not really worth it. Uh, all right. Yeah, what a shame that these guys got to be carrying around all that weight. I hope somebody starts a GoFundMe or something. Mm-hmm. God. Give them a gift card somewhere. This brings me back to uh, quite a few years ago. We were oh, we were drinking at the uh, <clears throat> at the Wise at a Legion, and one of my buddies was just extraordinarily drunk. Just one of those barely conscious, just blah. He's garbage. Garbage on a bar stool is what he had become. But yet he had a lady that wanted to take him home. And we were just roaring at the thought of, you know, what does this lady expect when she gets this garbage can back to her house? <laughs> I mean, he's he's almost unconscious. And you know how it goes, the Minnesota goodbye. It's taking forever. It's obvious this lady's taking my pal home for sex. She was making it quite clear. But we were just, again, we just, Having such a good time laughing at, come on, you re- you really think something's going to happen with this guy? Look at him, he's over 40, and he's beyond drunk. It's taking forever for the two of them to leave the bar. She's doing the Minnesota goodbye, because she's fine. And all the while, our buddy is creeping closer and closer to being completely out cold. <laughs> he's, he's like ha- hanging on to the wall, trying not to fall down. No. And maybe you had to be there, but as they're leaving... The dude was so drunk, 
he wasn't at first picking up on what we were laughing at. But then towards the end, he he understood. We were shouting things at him and he understood. Okay, I get it. They're making fun of me because this woman wants sex and I have no chance of performing tonight, right? So, but maybe you had to be there. But as we were leaving, someone in the bar shouted to my pal, Hey, when in doubt, just fold it in half. <laughs> <laughs> If you're having trouble, just fold it in half, dude. <sighs> Here's one of those stories where the details... The details are all foreign and such. You wouldn't understand a word I was saying, and neither would I, so I'll just cut to the chase. A dude... Loves his... Mama... So damn much that he got her a gift. He went ahead and gifted her a pair of sandals made out of his own skin. Ooh. So, Sick, you know, yeah. she can wear those around town if she wants to. Gross. Oh. This dude, who goes by the name of Gurjar, as luck would have it, Gurjar recently got himself shot in the leg by police. I wish I had more details on that. I do not. And I'm not exactly sure what Gurjar getting air by the cops has to do with anything. It just says here that he underwent a procedure to remove skin from his thigh. He then upped and donated the skin to a cobbler. What is this, 1836? What? <laughs> In the world? <laughs> the cobbler took Gurjar's skin chunks and skillfully fashioned the skin into a pair of sandals. Mandals. Made right from man. Mm. There are places on this earth that do things way differently than we do, huh? Very yep. much so. <laughs> Isn't that something? Again, I don't know why they mentioned that Gurjar got shot by the cops. They just skip right forward to that he he had some skin removed from his thigh. Just a he, little bit of a backstory on him. I guess. I don't, he hands the skin to a cobbler, and the cobbler made some flip-flops out of his... His mother did not run for her life like, like our mothers would if we handed a gift to them made of our own flesh. That's the thing. You mentioned he loves his mom, but that's not what you do for your mom if you love her. It's no. scare the hell out of her. But I guess they have a different relationship. Oh, yeah. yeah. Our mothers would run for their very lives. And if we the handed them a gift, yeah, that's huh? what I was wondering. Yeah, what's the cobbler's deal? Why, why is he like, oh yeah, totally? I'll make you some skin flops yeah, quick. You gotta hate. You gotta pay the bills. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, guess. I get. Gotta pay the bills. Yeah, the cobbler industry is hurting right now. <laughs> Gurjar Mamel was moved to tears by the gift. Gurjar Mama said, "I consider myself fortunate to have a son like old Gurj." May God protect him from all hardships and bless him with a life devoid of any sorrow. Well, good luck with that. Mm. But it's a nice thought from his mother. She sounds like a nice lady. Yeah, maybe just try some flowers or something. I wonder what it feels like to wear skin sandals. <laughs> yeah, I would be interested to know that too. If Ed Gein was alive, he could tell us. Probably not good. Unless he got a couple layers. Some of us know the feeling of a skin flute. Sure. <laughs> Some of us know the sensation of, uh, oh, uh, meat curtains. Um, but I wonder oh, what, God. uh, no. but I don't think any of us know the sensation of skin sandals. What do you think it's like, Josh? Well, you know, we had a co-worker for a while whose skin would just kind of slide off him. Yuck. And, uh, ah! no, that's, that's not okay. Where everything around him was covered in skin. Uh, not an exaggeration. I bet he had skin sandals if he were to go bare feet in some of those. What if you put on a pair of skin sandals and you thought, ah, oh, eh, God, it feels like I got kind of... Oh, wait, that's not my wart. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's my sandal. Oh. My yeah. sandal has a wart. Yeah, like if you have a pebble in your shoe, but it's just a pimple. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Oh, it's oh. not your pimple. <laughs> Why does your sandal have a tattoo? Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's just scratching their sandal. (laughs) (laughs) 
I'll tell you what, you ain't never heard anything like this before. I don't think you have. And if you know anybody in Japan, I'd give them a phone call and ask them if they're all right. Josh, is Mr. Big still touring the States? They best not go back to Japan for a while. Take a little break. Yeah, I think they should stay clear of Japan for a while. Everybody should. Because the word is there's an anus-eating virus. Oh, boy. Mm. That's killing people dead in Japan. For cripe's sake, here we go again. It's spreading fast, they say. The virus uh, goes by the name Streptococcal Toxic Shock Syndrome. Mm, That doesn't sound good. Oh, I thought it sounded all right. (laughs) This sounds like something you could just shake off and <laughs> no biggie. go right back to. Uh, here's the deal. In the first two months of this year, some 378 cases were detected in Japan. Last year, they totaled up about uh, 941 cases. So it looks like it's uh, so far it's moving faster. It's spreading faster. Experts, here's the good news. Experts have admitted they don't know what the hell is going on and what causes it. <laughs> It says here this uh, this funk can grow in your throat or on your skin or on your genitals or on your anus. Anus, huh? So I think calling it an anus-eating virus was just put there for me to click on. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's all kinds of different ways it can grow on you. Um, but they call it an anus-eating virus. I mean, I'm drawn to anuses just much as the next guy. Yeah, I so get it. That, that, I, was, that was for me to click on. Cubby might be afraid to visit that neighborhood, but not me. I don't like that neighborhood, not at all. Yeah. I avoid it at all costs. Oh, I like it. So stay tuned. I don't I even get, like seeing it. You don't like seeing no, it? No, no. What do you mean? What, do you put a hat over it or something? When Usually, you, yeah, curtain. <laughs> not a fan. I know what you goes on back you, there. You don't even like looking at it? No. Wow, oh, man. Uh, stay tuned maybe we'll have more information this is all I have for you now Um, stay tuned we'll get back to you if it comes this way the anus eating virus Uh, maybe have someone get a look at your your butthole now Uh, that's not what you want to hear hey there's this anus eating virus out there we'll give you more information later well I want to know now maybe I have it we'll keep you posted what's that itch I got nothing else for you Josh what's going on yeah, no, it's like any like illness. You you think you have it. You you hear symptoms about it, and you're like, yep. oh, I have that. Oh, I that's, have yep, that. that's definitely that. an anus eating virus. Yeah. Uh, I wonder who on the show is most likely to get an anus eating virus. Hmm. I kind of think me. Yeah, I think you will. With the limited knowledge that we have about it, I think it's a, it's it's a it's a what do you call it here? It's a roll of the dice. Yeah, toss up. We don't really know how it starts or the do- even the experts they don't know what's going on. They don't know what causes it. So any of us could get. I can feel, it, can but it be like you transmitted. Uh, yes, yes, it's spreading. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, what's funny? That, I would not want that. Uh, all he, of a sudden, Dana gets it, and then he spreads it to me. No, I don't want the anus virus. <laughs> That's how it works. Jo- or what's your name? Over what's his name? That's WAP. That's I how it works. Studio it spreads. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm feeling something kind of funny back there right now. Like you said, now that we're talking about it, now I feel like I got it. Yeah, you get in your head about those types it's, of things, it, or it could be a wood tick. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. What is that back there? Either way, I'll take a look. It's is that a- That's nice of you, Maybe it's the wood ticks that are spreading the anal eating virus. It's going west to east. They Years do ago, carry stuff, don't they? They do. Years ago, up at my dad's fishing shack, he had one of his drunk old hillbilly buddies up there, and we're all sitting around. Summertime, we're all sitting around the campfire, and we were talking about how, you know, we were young kids at the time, so my dad was like, hey. Before the end of the night, you boys should get into the cabin and check yourself for ticks, right? Which was good advice. Yeah. yeah. Out in the woods for a week. My dad's old hillbilly buddy, I looked at him over across the campfire. He was kind of sitting kind of funny on his chair, kind of lifting one cheek. First off, I thought he was going to, you know, launch a fart at us. Sure. Because he was a classless <laughs> That'd be a good guess. bitch. But he goes, oh. yeah, boys, I uh, I think I feel one right now going for the old honey hole. Oh. <laughs> That's scary. He went running into the cabin. Yeah, that's check so himself. scary. Yeah, boys, he says. Yeah, I found one on my inner thigh. 
Mm. And then I thought, oh no, if there's one in the suburbs, I bet the city is infested. Luckily, yeah. there was nothing there. Just kind of camped out down in the inner thigh. I had a buddy. Nice and warm. Wood tick went after his damn perennium. Oh. Oof. Locked in down there. Yeah, Oof. he was taking a shower and he had three testicles all of a sudden. Oh, that wood no. tick. Yeah, that some bitch had oh, been there long man. enough to. You oh. know how they puff up? Yeah. 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 Oh, Ooh. I hate when they do that. That was a mess when I got under my pal, helped him out with that. That was a mess. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I got in the shower with him. I said, let's let's get her out of there. I think we need a car jack. <laughs> I grabbed a cigarette lighter. Uh, how about another one of these deals? I have a hard time buying this stuff, but. I'm going to let her buck anyway. The lady claims she woke up one morning with whatever a Welsh accent sounds like, despite the fact that she's never visited the country of Welsh. I need people to understand how real this is and how I've lost my identity. I've lost part of who I am, and I'm just trying to figure out the new me. That's her. She goes by the name of Zoe Coles. She's 36 years old already. She's got a kid or two. She's from England. She says she just upped and got out of bed one uh, day last summer and she was suddenly talking like Welsh folks do. I believe if you are Welsh, you're from a place called Wales. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Which is in the stupid United Kingdom. I mean, no one knows how long I'm going to have this accent for. It could go, it could stay, it could change. Foreign accent syndrome, and apparently she caught it. That'd be fun for a little bit. You think so? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like, you can't control it? That'd be annoying as hell. Yeah, yeah it would. It starts you, in the anus. Yeah, it works your way. <laughs> Everything does. It would be fun for five seconds, and then you'd say, okay, I'd like to go back to being my regular self. She says, now, everybody asks her if she's from Wales. She's never even been there before. She's rolling her R's, which is a Welsh thing. She feels anxious when she leaves the house. She feels like she doesn't fit in anymore. She's hoping her old accent might come back so she can live a normal life again. That, yeah, that phenomenon is always quite strange to me. I don't know. Yeah, you, maybe it's real. It kind of doesn't seem like it, does it? There she goes. It's, it's hard to believe. I don't, I don't buy it. I'm having trouble buying it, too. Yeah. What do I know? <sighs> it all started when she found a wood tick on her perennium. <laughs> <laughs> I was always the kind of guy, Josh, when I was young, I was always the kind of guy that wasn't afraid to check gals for ticks if they needed somebody to help. You're a gentleman. Yeah, yeah. it's nice of you. Where am I now? Oh, God, we're almost out of time. Um, I'll end with a quick, quick fun one. Uh, I'm surprised this type of thing uh, never took off before. Maybe it did, and we just didn't hear about it. Maybe it, it did, and we didn't hear about it over this way. Nipple ring wearing, pot smoking, agent orange listening skateboarders in California are offering free pool cleaning services if you let them shred in your pool ski. Mm -hmm. They turn on agent orange. <laughs> Man, my brother listened to agent orange air day yeah. in the early 80s. A buddy of mine's older sister was really into agent orange, black flags. Like yep, that. black flag. So there you go. They'll uh, stop by your swimming pool and clean it for you if you let them shred in the bastard for a while. They empty it, right? You know how that works. Mm -hmm. And they do their skateboarding back and forth. They go back and forth like the glory days of J-Boy Adams and uh, Stacy Peralta. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was his name? Uh, Tony Alva, yep. right, uh, Wapple? Yep. Tony Alva and, and the rest of the Bones Brigade. The... Uh, the whole California skateboarding scene when it took off in the late 1970s. The Lords of Dogtown. Great movie, isn't it, Wapo? Oh, I love it. You guys, the rest of you seen Lords of Dogtown? I have. I was nope. super into skateboarding back mm -hmm. in the day. That's a fun movie. Chris Caballero. I thought it was Steve Caballero. Oh, yeah. 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 I was wondering who Chris Caballero was. I was, too. It's his father. <laughs> I had a buddy who I had a Steve it, Caballero. As soon as I said it, I'm like, no, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't you know, feel right. You know who you were thinking of? You were thinking of Chris Elliott from the movie Cabin Boy. Oh, <laughs> these pipes are clean. 
Sports. On the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Boy, Jason Tatum does a lot of complaining. Who does he think he is, Caitlin Clark? (laughs) Oh, man, that's good. Caitlin Clark was complaining so much that her dad got on her (laughs) at the tournament from the stands. I hear you. Well, you know what? Not a damn thing happened last night. Not a damn thing. Pretty slow night. Mm-hmm. Randy Shaver was just saying yesterday, by the middle of this week, it's going to be crazy by the middle of the week. You know, thir- especially by Thursday. Twins, the college basketball thing. But there ain't much going on. We got plenty packed into 730 the next time we talk sports. Our very first visit with Dick Bramer for this year's baseball season. Talk some Twins baseball with Dick Bramer. He's back for another season. We can't thank him enough. We're very excited. That'll be happening. Keep listening because right around that time we'll also have tickets, your shot to win tickets to the home opener coming up next Thursday. So that ought to be uh, something pretty cool. Very excited to talk to Mr. Bramer again. Wonder what his thoughts are on this uh, friggin' Shohei Otani character. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to him talking about that. Yeah. Good lord, give me a break with that. So yeah, Twins uh, home opener tickets and Dick Bramer at 7:30. Randy Shaver is going to duck by. Uh, we just got a word from Janelle Klein. She's going to hold off today because of the roads. Apparently, the roads are getting horrible. Yeah, careful with the rain and the ice. So yeah, I'll be totally honest with you. As we were leading up to that sports break. I thought we were heading into Josh's news report. <laughs> Can you tell? No. Nope. And, and I swung by. I swung by the chive, and I was looking at girls in bikinis. Yeah, that distracts you. Uh, yeah. I understand. Um, so, Dick Bramer, Randy Shaver, coming up in a half hour. Stay tuned for Josh's news. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. Ninety-three X. Grace here, customer service rep at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Our customers are our top priority, whether that's providing same-day service or solving a cooling issue for that addition on your home. Ashley, tell our listeners about this month's AC specials. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. The Ed Milet Show showcases the greatest peak performers sharing their journey, knowledge, and thought leadership. Sebastian Maniscalco. I'm a comedian. In my 20s, I was in, like, in a company, and I don't know, like, how marketing, sales. Yeah, you're a brand. You're a company. Yeah, and... Like Jay-Z says, I'm a businessman. Yeah. Yeah. To that. Remind me not to quote any hip-hop lyrics again. That was just a big miss. <laughs> when you first said it, I'm like, yeah, he's a businessman. Yeah, I nailed it at the end. I pulled it together. It just took me a minute. The Ed Milet Show is available on YouTube or wherever you listen. Half-assed morning show. 93X. We are still very much in an active search and rescue posture, and we will continue to be for some time. We have a large area that we have to search. This includes on the surface of the water, subsurface, as well as on the deck of the ship itself. Well, this is some very sad news, and obviously something we're very sensitive to here. A major bridge collapsed in Baltimore this morning after it was hit by a container ship, sending several vehicles plunging into the river below. Heard a loud boom. My room was shaking. I sat up real fast, held onto my bed. I thought it was an earthquake happening. I'm hearing that, like, the bridge collapsed. It did. Rescuers were searching for survivors after the ship collided with a pillar supporting part of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which carries Interstate 695 southeast of the Baltimore area. The incident was captured in dramatic video that you can see on 93x.com. It shows smoke billowing from a boat as the bridge and road to it tumbled into the river once the boat hit the support. Two people have been pulled from the water, one pretty uh, hurt. Uh, Two people from the water, one individual refused service and refused transport. Essentially, that person was not injured. However, there was another individual that's been transported to a local trauma center that is in very serious condition. As many as 20 people may be unaccounted for at this point. The governor declared a state of emergency and a search and rescue operation continues. That's why I don't like those big ships. Can't trust them. 
God dang, this video is insane. Yeah, mm-hmm. it just went down. It's so just like quick. a like a deck of cards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How many people did they estimate were on the bridge? Did well, you have that number in front of me? I mean, that, that's a busy stretch. They pulled three from the river, uh, two just fine, one hurt pretty bad, and then they said there could be about twenty more in the water at mm. this point. Oof. That is absolutely brutal. An iron range man allegedly admitted what led up to striking a pedestrian in Moose Lake last week. He was playing air guitar while driving. (laughs) Been there many times, many times. I like to play air guitar on that steering wheel, Josh. I saw a guy play real guitar once on Cedar. He was uh, going with his left leg out the window. He was going for it. He's playing an acoustic guitar. (laughs) Wait a minute, wait a minute. What the hell is he steering with? His right knee. His left leg was outside of the car window, and he's playing guitar. Drumming an acoustic, an acoustic guitar, and guitar. his right knee was controlling the steering wheel. I just tried it. I'm not even flexible enough thing to do that. Yeah, it was impressive. <laughs> Clowns never laughed before. <laughs> Beanstalks never grew. <laughs> Off the bridge. Just, he, oh, uh, he, he did crash into something, that guy. This The guy I saw? Yeah. No, oh. I was just for the bit. Oh, okay. Just hours, sorry for the confusion. Just hours earlier, the 21-year-old hit a Minnesota State Patrol squad car as he left the Twin Cities, where he had stayed up very late the night before, he said, drinking with friends. Oh, no. The complaint filed late Friday in State District Court said the victim had just left a Dollar General store on foot and was walking along the northbound shoulder of Highway 73 when he was struck by the vehicle traveling in the same direction. According to the Carlton County Sheriff's Office, around 2 o'clock they received reports of a person lying in a ditch that might have been hit by a vehicle. The driver told investigators he was working a lot of hours and had been up late drinking alcohol. Uh. He told police how he'd fallen asleep on the drive north and struck a trooper's squad earlier in the evening. The man allegedly explained while driving through Moose Lake, a good song began playing on the radio, prompting him to mimic guitar playing with his hands. Good Lord. Suddenly, he said the airbags deployed, though he claimed he didn't know he hit a person. (laughs) But the complaint says he went on to make a statement. He was looking down and jamming out a bit. And the next thing you know, I hit somebody. He also allegedly said his cruise control was set at 52 and a 40. Officers at the scene suspected alcohol impairment, and while the preliminary test came in below the limit, a search warrant was obtained for a blood draw. He's scheduled to make another court appearance next Monday. Did he kill a guy? Unfortunately, yes. God, <sighs> Lord. Why even set the cruise control if it's going to be seven over? Huh? Because he set his cruise control to 52 and a, or to 40. That's 12 over. Why, why even set it? <laughs> He was drunk and playing air guitar. Well, yeah. we don't know that he was drunk, Oh, to be specific here. He, he, he was at a point six six when I'm sorry, point zero six. Oh. Uh, oh. Point six six would be dead. Uh, yeah. Point I, zero six. So, yeah, I can't say for sure. They're, gonna, they're waiting on the toxicology reports. 52-year-old Brian Nagy, an assistant professor at Tennessee State University, inappropriately exposed himself to neighbors. This is disgusting, and management is responsible for taking care of this. This is such a weird story. The victims provided police with video footage showing Nagy at 12.39 a.m. March 14th walking up to their camera yelling, Take a look at my D, and you want to see my D? No. After screaming at the camera, he pulled his pants down and exposed his genitals. No one even answered the question. He just showed them. Right. He acted as if they said yes. He yelled at the camera again and then walked out of view. However, three minutes later, he returned, turned around, pulled his pants down and showed his bare buttocks. He smacked his butt repeatedly for about 14 seconds before pulling up his pants and leaving. You slapping himself on the ass? Yeah. Like, take a look at that. Then, I've been very naughty. Then, less than an hour later, at 1.40 a.m., he approached the camera and showed his butt again while sticking up his middle finger before walking away in the air, not in the butt. But he wasn't (laughs) done yet. A minute later, he was back and mooned the camera again, left, returned at 2.36 a.m. and mooned the camera for about five seconds one more time. How can we help this guy? What, 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 what's he doing? Then less than a week later, last Wednesday, between 1.33 a.m. and 3.39 a.m., he continued to go to the same neighbor's camera, flipping them off, yelling obscenities, exposing his buttocks, and placing them in fear for their safety. He was also seen via camera completely nude with only a sock covering his wiener oh. while shaking it from side to side. <laughs> This is a college professor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm showing up to his class. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's a blast. He's got I'm, something wrong with him. A manufacturer of fantasy-themed sex toys has accused an upstart Brooklyn firm of knocking off its distinctive designs. 
like infringing on copyrights for dildos such as Spritz the Sea Dragon and Tyson the Water Buffalo. Bad Dragon Enterprises, which noted it's been significant, significantly uh, commercial success over the years, had significant success in the adult toy field, alleged that Sin Saint has been selling 13 duplicate dildos. The colorful silicone toys feature scales, tentacles, suction cups, and other design elements meant to mimic the genitalia of dragons, sea creatures, and other fantastical characters. It's very clever. Some of the bad dragon products that Sin Saint is accused of swiping are sold as Kelvin the Ice Dragon, Stan the T-Rex, and Virgil the Drippy Dragon. <laughs> Sin Saint has uh, not been accused of copyright, copywriting other bad dragon offerings, however, like Jason the Demogorgon or Cuttlefish of Cthulhu. The Bad Dragon complaint seeks an order stopping Sin Saint from continuing any further alleged copyright infringements and seeks all the profits related to the artificial penises. Stiff competition in the dildo <laughs> world, would you say that, Josh? Sounds that way, yeah. I like some of those names. I was actually kind of disappointed. To I, be was with you. I, I was too. I was too. I really think if you if you gave us a couple hours, I think we could easily top that. Yeah, I, th- I thought they'd be a little funnier. Yeah, I, d- I didn't really get most of them. Disappointed. Good yeah. word, Josh. Maybe the comedy is humping a dragon. Maybe that's where the comedy well, is. Sure. They we don't need to put any effort well, in. Well, no, you could add to it, though. I, I think they should have done more. Yeah. yeah. Late Sunday night at approximately midnight, the proprietors of CM Motors in Pasco, Washington, witnessed a teen smashing the windows of two vehicles in an apparent bid to abscond with them. Abscond? I, I uh, used the thesaurus. That's great. What does that mean? To, like, take them. Steal. Run to, away. To, uh, that's... Uh... You're the best. Police arrived just as the thief was maneuvering one of the stolen cars out of the lot, only to be thwarted by the strategic positioning of a Pasco patrol car. So he fled on foot. Ultimately, the perpetrator was apprehended while hiding beneath a boat. When seen under the beam of a flashlight, police say the thief, a 15-year-old from the area, was found wearing underwear as a makeshift face covering. He's facing two counts of attempted auto theft. In a pinch, just... Pull your drawers over your face. (laughs) Here's a random underwear fact for you. There is a law in Scotland where any man who gets caught wearing underwear under his kilt can be fined two cans of beer. (laughs) Two cans of beer. What what website did you abscond that fact from? (laughs) Because that's good. In a similar fashion, police in Memphis are asking for the public's help identifying a man accused of holding up a dollar general and a family dollar at gunpoint while wearing a white towel over his head. We're told the man came in threatened the cashier and demanded cash. Another employee heard the man yelling and came up to the front of the store, which scared off the suspect. The media is calling him the bath towel bandit. (laughs) A demand police in multiple states have deemed the beanie bandit, allegedly stole over $4,000 worth of items from two central Pennsylvania stores while wearing a beanie. A beanie? What happened to the classic pantyhose? That oh, yeah. Maybe just because now when people see that or a ski mask, they know you're going to rob mm, the place. They're expensive now. Oh, are they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize uh-huh. that. Are, are those in style? I thought they went out of style or something. Are they uh, back in style? I guess it, it really depends on who you are. Some people don't wear them, but I think they're, they're still nice if it's chilly and you want to dress cute. Do you think you could use yoga pants nowadays? Like if you stretch them enough, can you see through? Some of them, I bet. Yeah. yeah. Some of the cheaper Cuts ones. Holes. Yeah. Have you, right, Wapple, go. have you not been on the internet yet? Well, yeah, but I mean... Hell yeah, you can see through yoga pants. <laughs> I can show you 11 websites that feature such a thing. Some you can, some you can't. A St. Louis Park apartment complex is alerting residents after delivery drivers were caught on camera stealing packages after making deliveries. Video shows someone in an Amazon uniform bringing a tote into the apartment's package room. Later in the video, you see that individual place at least two packages in that tote and then walk out. In another incident, just a few days later, management said a driver was seen scanning packages on his phone before taking two with him. 9.45 on our ring, we got notified that someone had stolen our packages. They were wearing an Amazon jacket. It's not the first time someone something like this has happened at St. Louis Park in recent months. In December, a woman had packages taken from her porch by a thief who was also in an Amazon uniform. That same week, a St. Louis Park police spokesperson said they received a call about the exact same thing happening just minutes away. In a more bizarre case of thievery, this time in the Philippines, a man who reportedly stole a washing machine returned it back to the owner after he found out the equipment didn't work. Mm. The 21-year-old was arrested for theft. How does that work? Do they just call it even? 
Doesn't that seem like a, a lot of effort to bring it back? I'd be more mad that he brought it back if it doesn't work. I'm like, darn it, dude. Now i got to find a way to get rid of this. And a landlord in Pennsylvania who was unhappy with tenants who said uh, broke a washer and dryer set their apartment on fire. His name, Ronald Frisbee the Third. Is that right? Is he, he's, <laughs> has he got all that Frisbee money? He uh, comes from the uh, inventors of the... Uh... Quite possibly. Yeah. Police say the 28-year-old lit a cardboard box on fire inside their apartment about 2.45 a.m. Saturday because he was mad they broke the washer and dryer. Wouldn't that be something to be part of this, the Frisbee empire? Yeah, oh, dude. some of that Frisbee cash. That's it's why like, at 28 he can afford some investment properties. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like that dude Rubik's I know. He's rich as hell. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah. Came up with that cube. Now streaming on Netflix, the stand-up special Dave Attell Hot Cross Buns. I always travel with a bag of trail mix. The most unsatisfying snack, am I right? I mean, honestly, let's call it what it really is. Not enough M&Ms. I mean, that's what trail mix is. Every handful is just another handful of disappointment. And airing tonight on NBC, the second season finale of Night Court. The second season finale of Night Court. The new Night Court. And Dave Attell, my God, it's like I uh, boarded a time machine and went <laughs> back to 1999. I love Dave Attell. Formerly Dr. George O'Malley on Grey's Anatomy, Minnesota's own TR Knight is 51. The very funny Leslie Mann, the drunk wo- uh, woman and 40-year-old virgin, Catherine Heigl's sister and knocked up and its follow-up spinoff, This is 40. She's 52 today. Raiders running back, well, retired Raiders running back, Marcus Allen, 64. Oh, my God. The great Martin Short, 74, believe it or not. Wow. Probably in the running for funniest man in the history of planet Earth. Oh, he's way up there. In the running, no doubt. Shout out to the Chaska Robotics team raising money to get to Worlds from Officer Nasty Jesus. Congratulations to 14-year-old Alice Lee, the North Oaks teen who won the American Cup in St. Louis, joining a very short list of chess players, which includes the famed Bobby Fischer to claim a major title at the age of 14. Happy 50th to Big Boo from Shakopee. Well, Big Boo. Happy birthday to Rosalie, one of the OGs of the sisterhood, turning 32 today. And happy birthday to Ide Mill still sucks, Jesus. And that's 93X News. Minnesota Twins interview on the Half-Assed Morning Show. Well, back in the 70s and 80s, I wish I'd have had an interpreter. I'd be scot-free. Ah, that's a special day, Randy Shaver. Yes, it is. Don't screw this one up. <laughs> it is I, special. I'll try not to. I mean, sure, you're here and that's cute and all. Yes. Well, you're always here. Yes. Nobody you, cares. You were born here. You'll die here. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Today's the official beginning of the baseball season for us. We got Dick Bramer on the line to talk Twins baseball. Hello, Dick. What a thrill it is for us to have you back in the mix. As thrilled as I am to be uh, back with you folks, I have uh, enjoyed it the last few years, and I'm looking forward to being on every Tuesday or just about every Tuesday morning. That's right. Just about every Tuesday morning we can talk twins with Dick Bramer. How many how many seasons now have we uh, have you been working for me now, Dick? How many seasons? <laughs> uh, well, Master, I believe. Uh, uh, this, will, this will be our fourth year, I believe. Wow. Time friggin' flies. It absolutely does. And it is tough to believe, especially when you look out the window this morning, that we're two days away from the beginning of the baseball season. (laughs) Yeah. But then somebody told us uh, Thursday in Kansas City it's going to be 65 and sunny or something wonderful like that. Yeah. So that works just fine. So, uh, Dick, tell us all about your offseason, man. I'm sure you got some stories. Well, yeah, it's been different, uh, although I've been pretty idle during the off-seasons anyway. But uh, uh, yesterday it occurred to me that while I was uh, drive, uh, blowing out my driveway, that uh, in 40 prior seasons I was down in Fort Myers, Florida at the end of March. Yeah. That was that was a lot of fun going up and down the driveway with the snowblower <laughs> thinking about that. <laughs> that crossed and your I mind, find huh? my, yeah, I find myself uh, in, I don't know, kind of awkward uh, uh, time right now. I'm not sure uh, where to go, what to say, what to do. It, it reminds me a lot of when I went through puberty. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it's got to be different for you. I mean, yeah. 40 years, and 
you know, you, you a new chapter in your life has begun. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it sucks uh, that you were out plowing the driveway uh, compared to being in Florida, but there's got to be some positives, right? I mean, and we'd love to hear more about, you know, the new gig. What are what are some of your responsibilities with the new gig? Well, I'm going to be uh, emceeing some things for the Twins, making public appearances. I'm doing some writing, actually, for their uh, Twins uh, uh, magazine. They're in the stadium uh, magazine oh. that uh, they give out. Uh, so I'll be doing some of that. And um, I've recorded some things for their radio a pregame show, things like that. Most of it is stuff that I, uh, I've already uh, taken care of, the, but there'll be some in-season uh, duties as well, and uh, then uh, we'll, uh, you know, see what uh, the next season brings in terms of uh, duties and all that, but it's uh, kind of an open-ended thing, but um, very much looking forward to uh, spending more time on the golf course. Uh, Randy, you should know, I returned the invitation uh, for your uh, golf tournament. I'm uh, proud to say that I'll be a part of uh, the golf tournament this oh, year. Fabulous. Fantastic. And, uh, and looking forward to um, spending more time in or on the, the lakes of Minnesota. Good for you. Good for you. And, you know, seeing how that golf tournament coming up in June, Randy's charity golf tournament is going to be just a couple weeks before the man retires. Uh, I wouldn't expect to leave out of that country club before about 1 o'clock in the morning. (laughs) (laughs) Shaver's just going to be, oh, he's going to be telling old stories. Yes, I've heard that one. You're going on and on. I bet that gala, too, that's going super late. The gala, oh, that'll be uh, buck wild. And by the way, Dick, thanks for sending us that congratulatory message a while back when we hit our 25-year mark here on the morning show. Yeah, that meant a lot. That's a pretty significant milestone. This is a crazy business, and uh, uh, I think Randy and I are both the survivors of uh, what can be a very uh, uh, challenging and uh, fluid uh, uh, career uh, situations in 25 years on radio. That's pretty That's pretty monumental. I'll yes, be damned. Is. I'll be damned. You should have seen what we look like on day one, and you should see what we look like now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, we all could say that. It's, it's been brutal. <laughs> Terrible for our health. Randy, you look the same. You haven't changed at all. For us, it's like, you know, when they, they show a president at the beginning of uh, his term and the end of his term, uh, that's the difference we have. <laughs> but worse somehow. Now, before we talk about the twins, you know, what we might expect from them and the this and the that, um, one more one more little side note, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. This summer, you will be going into the Twins Hall of Fame. Dick Bramer, is that correct? Uh, no, 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 that, that's not correct. Terry Ryan and Rick Stilmazic are going into the Twins Hall of Fame. Uh, the one thing that the Twins are doing here on opening day, uh, which is a little more than a week away, uh, the home opener, uh, they're going to have the, uh, I'm going to throw out the first pitch, but before that, uh, they're going to name the uh, TV booth uh, after me in a little oh, ceremony. Oh, that's oh, great. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. That's so awesome. That, that'll be nice. And uh, so the twins are going over the top. I really appreciate it. They're, they're uh, making uh, what would ordinarily be a pretty difficult day for somebody who's been there for 40 home openers. Uh, I'll be there, but uh, not on the air. And uh, they're... Uh, they're uh, really uh, doing a nice job putting things together to make the day go by um, and make it a fun day for me rather than the other way. All right. All right. That's what it was. Yeah, it'll be officially the Dick Bramer broadcast uh, booth and all that. Well, I how, mean, uh, how weird is that going to be, Dick? How weird, it's going to be weird, different. That's going to be weird. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, uh, for all the years, uh, the ramp up for a season actually began in January with the winter caravan, and I didn't go out on caravan. I didn't go to spring training. Uh, so there's been no uh, ramp up, nor should there be, because I'm, I'm not going to be on the air this year. Uh, it's going to be different, but I here's the way I'm looking at it. I, I'm uh, signing up now for uh, a senior baseball league. Oh, and I'm going to be I'm going to be playing baseball on Wednesdays and Sundays during the summer. That's and, awesome. I mean, we, we've all seen, you know, I mean, Justin did it and Burt Blylevin did it. Harmon Killebrew did it. You know, they they uh, played uh, for the Twins uh, and then went into broadcasting. Well, I'm doing it backwards. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I had my broadcasting stand. It lasted 40 years, and I know the odds are stacked against me, but I'm I'm hoping to, at age 68, uh, 
uh, be the oldest rookie ever in Twins history. <laughs> <laughs> that would be incredible. A that s- is fun. A senior baseball league. So have you demanded uh, you play shortstop, or what's your uh, what's your demands? Well, I, I went to the fantasy camp in January, and uh, for the first time in a few years, but I've been to 20-some fantasy camps, and uh, I, I did okay towards the end of the week, but I hadn't played baseball for a while. Uh, the one thing I did clarify yesterday, there there is no PED testing in this league. <laughs> <laughs> Bramer just so, shows uh, up. Unless, uh, you know, maybe maybe they screen for insure or something like that. <laughs> I, I don't know. You just show up the size of a uh, house. Yeah. <laughs> just jacked. The second coming of Mo Vaughn, you know, <laughs> right. strolls in. Well, that's all very cool. Very cool. How old do you have to be to hit that senior league? 55? I, I believe it's 60, 60. but I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, I met some people through the uh, fantasy camp uh, who are a part of this league, and they invited me to play. And uh, so, yeah, it's going to be fun uh, uh, playing against uh, people my age and all that, which is kind of what we do in the fantasy camp for the most part, too. But, uh, yeah, I'll be uh, playing baseball and uh, still going to some Twins games, and I'm looking forward to um, a, certainly a different summer than I've had for four decades, but it's going to be a fun one. Well, if there's anything well, we can That's do great. to make it any more enjoyable, let us know, Dick Bramer, because we're, we're excited for you. We are. We, you will be doing that every Tuesday morning. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll have to track the stats of Dick Bramer this summer. Oh, you got to keep oh, us up to awesome. date. Yeah, yeah, we can we track can, the stats. Is there a well, web, website no, we I, can I, follow? I, I, well, I prefer that you not do that, but uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, you know, playing. We I think some Sundays we play double headers and Boy. things like that. So uh, it'll be interesting. It'll My be fun. Damn, that's great. All right. Well, here we go. In two days. The 2024 Minnesota Twins take the field for game one in Kansas City. And, uh, I mean, a a lot of what I've been reading, uh, people are picking the Twins to repeat in the division. But they've hit a little bump in the road here with injuries now in the last couple of weeks, haven't they, boys? Yeah, like everybody else has. It seems to be an increasingly more problematic situation. You know, the, the players, pitchers, uh, spend a good chunk of the off season getting in shape, but that then they get to spring training and they break down. And Twins have some guys with some nagging injuries. The hope is Caleb Thielbar uh, will be just fine. He's got a hamstring issue, and so I don't think there's any question that the lineup should be a really fun lineup to watch. Should hit a lot of home runs. Uh, we've got some of the more dynamic players in the game with Royce Lewis, Carlos Correa, and Byron Buxton is healthy as we speak. So uh, it's going to be a fun team to watch. I think they're going to score a lot of runs. I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, the trendy pick that I've noticed in reading articles about the American League uh, Central Division, the trendy pick to maybe Tigers. surprise some folks. You're right, Randy Shaver, the Detroit Tigers. Yep. Very much so. And. Yeah, they made some strides forward last year, and uh, they bottomed out for a long, long time. Uh, and I think they're trying to emulate what uh, the uh, Orioles uh, did, and really, Orioles broke through a, well towards the middle half of the 2022 season, but then had a great year last year. And uh, so you can kind of imagine the the Orioles being the most serious challenger to the Twins in the, within the division. Kansas City should be a little bit better. I'm a little concerned about Cleveland and where they're headed, and the White Sox are in full uh, rebuild mode. So uh, I would think if there's anybody in the division to challenge the Twins, it would be the Tigers. But i still got the Twins for around 90 or plus uh, wins uh, in the regular season. That would be terrific. What do you think about that uh, type of prediction, Randy Shaver? Um, I think it's. I, I think injury is going to play a big part of that for the Twins. Um, they always do, c- don't they? Certainly uh, early on uh, to get through this early part of the season and get everybody healthy. Um, I, you know, we talked about this before. How the Tigers, like six, seven years ago, just said, "Okay, we're done doing free agency. We're going to build from the farm system up." And we're going to take our lumps, but we're going to, this is what we're going to do. This is who we're going to be. And now you're starting to see the fruits of, of that decision with Torkelson and Colt Keith and, you know, Riley Green and McKinstry, guys like that, Parker Meadows. Um, this is the decision they made, and now it's going to, you know, supposedly start to pay off for them. 
So it's and it it's, helps it helps them too. Excuse me for interrupting, but it helps them too that they don't have to carry Miguel Cabrera's contract anymore too. Yeah, I mean I, they're they're in a position that if these young guys, similar to the Orioles, if these young guys can start to come through and be everyday players that can produce, um, they're going to be they're going to be a tough team to to go up against. Maybe not so much this year. But you give them another year or two with these kids who are all under the, the team's control. You give them another year or so; they're going to be definitely the team to watch. But I think for the Twins right now, pitching was their strength last year. Starting pitching for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, the bullpen's supposed to be, but they're banged up right now. So we'll have to see how they get through the first uh, month of the season injury-wise before I think we can really kind of truly see what this team is made of. So. Why don't you mention the Chicago White Sox? I think the most common prediction I've seen is that the Chicago White Sox are going to be a bag of dog feces. <laughs> uh, nobody. <laughs> they're just tearing the White Sox apart in every article yeah. that I read. Uh, yeah. What do we got going on now? Uh, by the way, Dick Bramer uh, on the line with us, of course, right now. Uh, many of our listeners are texting in Dick Bramer saying, welcome back. Uh, we love you. Have a great year. They're very happy to hear us back. Uh, hear you back on our radio show. Uh, got a text from Ask Me About CrossFit Jesus, who says, no pressure, but I just drafted Dick Bramer number one overall in my fantasy geezer baseball draft. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite not I hope he has to qualify to be a, quote, geezer. Yeah. <laughs> uh. You mentioned the pitching. Now, this really surprised me. This really surprised me. It's, it's one website, BleacherReport.com. You mentioned, uh, maybe someone didn't mention it. Maybe it was just the voices in my head. Okay, no Sonny Gray this year. No Kente right. is gone. But the Twins were picked the fifth best pitching staff in all of baseball going, mm, going into the season. Yep. Uh, by BleacherReport.com. And I think a lot of that is the bullpen, to be quite honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they picked up uh, Topa from Seattle, who's unfortunately banged up at hurt. Right. Rock Stewart's a really good uh, pitcher coming into his own. Uh, Griffin Jacks certainly qualifies under that heading. Duran, unfortunately, is hurt, but he's proven himself to be one of the better relievers in baseball. Um, they've got the pieces there. Um it's just a matter of can they get healthy and can they get through this first stretch without losing anybody else. Here's my question for uh, Dick Bramer because I have I have faith in Pablo Lopez, Joe Ryan, and Bailey Ober. I yep. love their their potential, and and Pablo Lopez has shown us that he can just be an absolute mule out there. Can Chris Paddock be a factor? Can Louis Varlin be the fifth starter um, every, all year long kind of a thing? Well, I think so. I mean, I, I've always been a big believer in Louis Varland as a starting pitcher. I just think he, he's got the the build to be a durable starting pitcher, eventually a 200-inning-a-year guy. Uh, Desclafani doesn't look like he's going to pitch at all this oh. year. Uh, so, you know, you, you have some openings there. And, you know, one of the strengths of this Twins team last year was its bullpen, but that was built – around the foundation of a really good starting rotation. So you can have the best bullpen in the world, and the Duran thing really is concerning because of how hard he throws, and, and you know my, his off-speed pitch is you know, 97 miles per hour. And when you have a soft tissue issue uh, injury like that, I can see the Twins being very, very deliberate and careful with him before they bring him back. But you can have all the great arms out there, but if your starters don't give you five, six-plus innings most nights out, well, then it won't take long for the bullpen to get uh, tuckered out, too. The only clubs in Major League Baseball with better pitching staffs, according to Bleacher Report, maybe you guys want to try to you know answer oh, the question for The Dodgers, for. for sure. The Dodgers are number four. You got that right, Randy Shaver. Uh, I would say probably the Yankees, just on reputation. No, they don't mention the Yankees. Oh, really? Dick okay. Bramer, you want to take a guess? Braves. Oh, boy, Atlanta. Atlanta's number one. Yeah. Right. Sandwich in the middle, the Philadelphia Phillies and the Seattle yep. Mariners. Yep. Sure. Okay. And this was cute, too. A website. Was this? Ble- yeah, also Bleacher Report. Um, I love reading this. Uh, they they talk about every big league team's best kept secret for the upcoming season. And for the Twins, they mention Matt Walner, who I just absolutely mm. love watching at the plate. Mm-hmm. Ashley, you never dated got- him, did you? 
No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Matt got some awfully big hits for the Twins last year, and he basically made Joey Gallo unusable. Uh, big, strong left-handed hitters, and Matt could match Gallo in terms of power. Uh, made more consistent contact than Joey did. Um, tremendous arm in the outfield. And, uh, yeah, I, I just think Matt um, Walner, compared to the handful of at-bats he got in 2022, what he showed in 23, I think sets him up to be a really productive player for the Twins in uh, 2024 and beyond. Wouldn't that be awesome? What town is he from again? Forest Lake. Forest Lake. Forest Lake. Forest Lake. Oh, yeah. From my alma mater. That's uh, yeah. How in the hell did you guys come from the same town? Yeah, really don't get it. Really don't get it. Look at you. Yeah, and then and look then, at him. And then look at Matt Walner. Yeah, and then look at me. I'm, I'm looking <laughs> at you. I'm looking at you right now. Oh, I forgot. So here we go. Starting on Thursday, we'll get a look at the uh, at the boys for real for the very first time. Uh, Dick Bramer, what do you make of uh, old show high there? You got any uh, thoughts on, uh, my God, this massive scandal going on? I think there is so much more that we don't know than what we know at this point. I know he had uh, made a statement, didn't take questions. I would have liked to have seen him take some questions about the whole gambling situation. And I heard your clip at the start of our segment, Pete Rose wishing he had an interpreter. Um, but, but the, the, you know, there are some similarities. Now, and I'm not saying that the the guilt is the same okay so we we need to presume innocence until proven otherwise but shohei otani right now is the face of baseball he is the the most expensive player out there uh he's a he's not a generational player he's a you know once in the history of the game type player so let's just identify him now as the face of the game well, back in the mid '80s, Pete Rose was pretty much the same guy. He had just broken the, uh, you know, Ty Cobb's hit record. Uh, was managing the Reds when everything blew up in his face. So this is a really delicate situation for Major League Baseball, and and I think I saw a report where they have uh, bank copies of checks that he wrote to the bookie Otani. Oh. Well, that's that's a that's a pretty serious deal now, and and yeah. if that's true. Uh, baseball's got to do the right thing here. They're they're trying to move forward uh, in partnership with uh, sports betting and sports betters. But you you've got to, if you're going to do that, you've got to you know have you know some rules in place that you're willing to enforce to make sure that uh, the the competition on the field isn't perceived to be compromised. So this is a really ticklish situation, I think, for Major League Baseball. I'll be. They found some friggin' checks? That's not That's, good. And, and I thought I saw that on, on uh, the... Uh, a report la- late last night. So if that's true, yeah, uh, then that that's that's pretty damning evidence, I think. Um, just because, I mean, for one thing, sports betting in California is illegal, and and right. so that's where he's made his residence, and that's where he has made his uh, you know career. So in the memo, uh, there's in the a lot memo of- part of the check that he write illegal gambling. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, I don't know. I mean. Right now, the guy says he never bet on, on any sport, much less baseball. We'll take him at his word, and but there needs to be a full and thorough investigation. And uh, you know, uh, the the future of the the sports relationship with sports betting uh, and a lot more than that are all at risk here. God dang! So, um, does anyone know uh, there is an investigation underway? Does anyone oh, yeah. do you have any idea the timetable for such also, a thing? I also think, Nick, it's beyond Major League Baseball. They've turned this over, I think, if I read this right, yeah. that it's like the FBI. I think they've, I think they've turned it over. Well, they, they really have to. Yeah. Well, it's mm-hmm. just... Because they, if they don't do that and they find no evidence of gambling, I think there's going to be some people who are going to be very skeptical of what Major League Baseball has done. So yeah. I think that they've got to turn it over... To you know, obviously, a, a different agency in order for them to look, even if the consequences are terrible, y- you've got to do that. Okay, um, but I mean, this Dick's right. This thing could re- this thing could blow up and be just devastating for Major League Baseball. 
Um, he did come out and say what he said yesterday, that he had nothing to do with it. Yeah. I, you know, I think there's a lot of people that are hoping he's right or hoping that that's a correct statement, but we're, we, we don't know that for sure, and we won't know that until the investigation's complete. What an absolute disaster this has the potential to be. This will be like in 1984, Wayne Gretzky. You know what I'm talking about? Gets busted. In 1987, Michael Jordan gets busted for this or that. It's mind-blowing. And and you guys weren't the only ones. Baseball fans were upset that Shohai would not take any questions yesterday. And ironically, uh, the Dodgers and presumably Otani will be at Target Field here in a little more than a week. Yeah, that's right. We talked so, about that yes uh, yesterday, I think. Yep, Ooh, and uh, just a supremely talented player. But you know, there's nothing wrong in the, our current society for uh, establishing that no rules are rules. You got to follow them, right? I mean, we're. Everywhere you look, there are people who seem to defy the rules and seem to think they can get away with it and all that. But this this one, again, is going to have to be, uh, as Randy said, dealt with thoroughly and delicately if they, you can do both at the same time because he's such a huge, huge figure in Major League Baseball. Ain't that the truth. Uh, someone else uh, texted in here and said, write and check. What is he, my 57-year-old aunt? <laughs> 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 Youngest person to ever write a mean, check. You can't Venmo four point five million dollars. <laughs> That's a good point. That's true. I got my chops busted for writing checks up until uh, well, up until I got married. Uh, what the hell is the date today, Josh? What is it, March? Yeah, March twenty sixth. I've been married for how long now? Five, six months. Up until I got married, I was a check writer. I got my chops busted all the time. Oh, it was great mm-hmm. seeing you come in here. Yeah. And you're also mailing them out. You know, yeah. a lot of people do the That's automatic adorable. stuff oh, online. Dick Bramer, I'm licking the envelope. I'm putting a stamp on the, you know. He puts his glasses yeah. on and he sits out here and just writes yeah. check after yeah. check. At the table, right? I always know it's close to the first of the month because Nick's out there writing checks after the show. Yeah. Yeah. And, the the mails. Mails. and he doesn't pay like attention that. to bills, so I put a couple in my name out there before. Yeah. Yeah. I have a very comfortable living. But then my friggin' wife, she got me introduced to this, uh, you know, she handed Handles all that with the uh, the internet. Well, yeah, what a what a nightmare this has become. This Otani deal. I guess we'll just have to we'll have to uh, you know scoot up to the television and see what happens. So there you go. While we have Dick Bramer on the line, our listing audience should uh, hop to it uh, onto the Luther Bloomington Kia text line. Text the word "strike" to six five one nine eight nine ninety three ninety three for a shot to win tickets. To the home opener against the Guardians. That's next Thursday at Target Field. And thank you, Minnesota Twins, very kindly for furnishing that prize. Again, the word is strike, and the number is 651-989-9393, where you can see Dick Bramer hey, you guys, at the home you home. guys had some, ex- Yeah, you had some experience uh, last year, didn't you, throwing out the first pitch? You got any, uh, yeah. you got any tips for me? Yeah. Um, don't try to throw it too hard, because if there was a batter in the right handed batter's box, I would have hit them in the jaw uh, with my throw. I tried to put too much uh, heat on it, Dick Bramer. Um, um, well, wait, Ashley, wait, wait a second, though. Why is Dick asking for information on to play? He's in a senior league. He's he's a baseball guy. <laughs> yeah, he should you don't, be, asking, you don't he should be asking you clowns for information. <laughs> well, Dick Bramer is just, uh, I think, maybe trying to be cordial and friendly. Well, I, you know, they told me uh, that they wanted me to throw out the first pitch. I, I uh, was a little concerned as to who's going to uh, try to catch it. I haven't checked the wild schedule, but is Flurry uh, or, or the Wild playing? <laughs> <laughs> the big glove. Yeah, he'll catch it. Get a guy to stack the pads. Up there. <laughs> right, exactly. Swatted away with a stick. You're going to do great. And uh, folks are going to get a huge kick out of it. Uh, I know it. You don't need our advice, man. You're you're Mr. Baseball in this friggin' town, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, just don't skip it like Randy Shaver did in Brownton a few oh, years ago. I did not skip it. Yeah, oh you God. did. We have video proof. Dick Bramer, uh, welcome back to the half ass Morning Show. I'm thrilled to be back, and um, uh, we'll uh, look forward to having a lot of good uh, chats about baseball and otherwise over the course of the summer. After a handful of games, um, we're going to have plenty to talk about, I bet, uh, next week. So thanks very much, Dick, and we'll talk to you in one week. 
You got it. You bet. Dick Bramer every Tuesday on the half Fast Morning Show, just two days away from Twins Baseball, Randy Shaver. Fantastic. Someone get me a beer and a and a hot dog. There's a there's a part of me that feels bad for him because, you know, this isn't kind of the way that, you know, he wanted this to go. Right. But I also feel uh, happy for him, too, because he he's earned this, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he has absolutely earned all of the accolades that he's getting. He has earned everyone's respect, and we should be absolutely thrilled that he wants to come on here and talk baseball because there is no one who has watched Twins Baseball closer uh, with more of a uh, an eye on this team than he has over the last 40 years. He's such an encyclopedia of Twins knowledge that it's just great to have him. So. I was kind of following along on text here while Dick was on, and uh, you know everybody said the, pretty much the same thing you did, Randy, how glad they are to hear his voice. And a lot of people yeah. are bitter what happened. They're yep. a little bitter. Yep. They don't think it was fair. Yep. But, and hopefully, you know... Um, People want to get it saying, hey, will he do a podcast or maybe some sort of his own live stream every once in a while? Maybe he'll get into that. That'd be cool. Yeah. He seems pretty tech savvy. Dick Bramer does. Does he? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It, you know, like his cameos, like the sound. Well, it, okay, I'm just getting super nerdy. It, it's really good quality. <laughs> okay. Like that. So he's he right. knows what he's doing. Well, good for him. And I agree with everything you said, Randy Shaver, of course. How could you argue anything that just came out of your yap about our pal Dick Bramer? What else is going on around here? Gosh, you know, we're we're kind of in that period where we're waiting for the Wild to get back up and running on All Thursday. Right. Yeah. I think the T-Wolves, I, I don't have the schedule in front of me because I was thinking about baseball today since Dick They play tomorrow on. night. Play tomorrow night. So, mm-hmm. um, College kinda, basketball, the big yeah. tournament gets going again Thursday. I, I, there was watched, nothing that went on last night. Well, there's women's basketball. I watched the Iowa game last oh, me too. night and Caitlin Clark. Oh, yeah, I was watching uh, that. And it was a struggle. They did not play well. Uh, there was a chance that they could have lost that game last night at home. I think they got a little help from the refs. Not that I'm a big, you know, you know, the refs, you know, turn this game or that game one way or another. But they did get, it felt like, a few calls last night. Clark did not play as well as she is capable, but... Um, Needless to say, they've moved on into into the Sweet 16. All right. so. Golden Gopher ladies are playing in the NIT tonight. Yep, they play tonight. There was one thing from the ladies NCAA tournament that uh, I thought was cute. This announcer, uh, Iowa State played Stanford in ladies basketball last night. I don't know who won. I, I think they lost a heartbreaker, Iowa State. The Iowegians did? Yeah. Uh, that's too bad. Said nobody. <laughs> <laughs> The lead announcer had a great line. They were going back and forth with big three-pointers. Did you have that line that he dumped on us, Josh? Yeah. Browns wide open. That's better spot, and it is again. Iowa State with the lead. More drama than a junior high lunch table here on the farm. Let's go. That's terrific. Yeah, I do like that. <laughs> More drama too. than a junior high lunch table. <laughs> I created drama. At a junior high lunch table, so much so that I got called into the principal's office. Sure. I was sitting there, 1984, don't you know? And all these uh, 13-year-old girls at our table were going on and on about how much they loved Bono. <laughs> Bono from U2, he's so hot. And they were going, and I just, I at, at that point in my life, you know, it was hard rock or nothing. And I was so tired of hearing about U2. I hated U2. I still hate him. And so I said, Bono? Well, he's, he's dead. And the girl said, what? And I said, don't you guys, when you're before school, don't you watch MTV? And I was lying. I didn't have MTV in 1984. But I said, it was on MTV this morning. He's dead. And hit by a car. And, of course, you know, back then, they couldn't get out their phones and check anything. Yep. I got so many of them crying and upset over the uh, uh, pretend death of Bono that I got called into the principal's office. That's, That's amazing. It was Man. awesome. It was absolutely, it's not bad. It, they needed to hear something like that. <laughs> they needed to be knocked down a peg. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sticking Spe- with basketball. Spe- yes? Speaking of women's basketball, yes. one, one last note, which I thought was incredible. The UConn women made the Sweet 16 last night mm-hmm. after a win over Syracuse. That's 30 years in a row. They've made it to the Sweet 16. Does that dude still the, coach him? Yes, Gino Ariema. He's still there? 30 wow. Straight years in the Sweet 16. That is amazing. Otani's that, that not going to. That may never be done again. Otani's not going to win any money on those 
girls. <laughs> well, certainly you know not betting against them. No, they're always there. That's amazing. Uh, that's great. I and didn't Paige know that. Paige Beckers had a huge night last night. The the, uh, the young lady from Minnesota. She's from uh, she's from Egan. Ho- uh, she played at Hopkins. No, she went to what's that school again? Paige Beckers. She went to uh, Eastview. Oh yeah, Pride <laughs> yeah. Eastview High School. Yeah. yeah. No. No. Speaking of hoops today, did anyone see the video of Shaquille O'Neal, uh, who of course seven foot one? Wait, how about wait a minute? How tall is seven one? I yeah, think seven he goes one. Okay. Stats. Yeah, Shaq is seven one. Yesterday, he put a video up on the uh, godless internet. Uh, he was hanging around with a Nigerian basketball player who's seven foot eleven. Oh my God! This what? is up on 93x.com. Yeah, I have got to go see this. Seven foot eleven, and apparently this—he's a twenty-three-year-old kid. His name is Egoke. Uh, Adegoke. Abudun Adegoke. Seven foot eleven. Okay. 23 oh years old. Plays a poor he, kid. I, I know. It, it kind of looks uh, painful Yeah, to be 7 just... foot 11. It says here he plays some level of pro basketball in, in Nigeria. I can't see this guy getting up and down the floor for Jack squad. But it's, you know, something you're not going to see every day. A 7 foot 11 human being making Shaquille O'Neal look like an average sized <laughs> person. Well, it's kind of hard to tell from, well, no, I take that back. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. You're looking at it? Yeah, he's. they're back-to-back. Mm-hmm. The kid is, doesn't look like he's thin. He looks like he's built, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah he's, he's big. That's for I sure. just don't know if he can move, obviously. Right. But seven, eleven. Oh, my God. That's just crazy. He, look, he makes Shaq look tiny. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I saw Shaq once at the Mall of America, and he was the biggest person I've ever seen. And he had really big security guards that looked very small next to him. <laughs> Do you remember when Shaq first started in the NBA? Yes. That he had a promotions person send out shoes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. That, did you guys? Because they sent one to Care one time. And they're size like, I don't know, what are they, 24s or Maybe even bigger than that. I don't 26. remember. Yeah, but they, they look like boats, man. Yeah. They were just huge. I have okay, a 22s. former. Pardon me? 22s. Yeah. Shaq just riding crazy. on 22s. I have a former <laughs> NBA stars game used tennis shoe in my home. And I don't remember the size, but it's it's insane to look at. Yes, it is. Can I tell you who it was? The Packer. Oh, nice. <laughs> wow. He was a big dude. Nikola yeah. Pekovic. Yeah. I was, uh, as Weird Al Yankovic sang to us uh, yesterday in his song eBay, I was highest bidder at a silent auction, and I got one of the Peckers game used. That guy was a brick house. Yes. Was he not? Mm-hmm. My damn. A seven foot eleven human being who doesn't move very well? Don't tell Vince McMahon. <laughs> He'll have that dude signed up for an unwatchable series of matches with Brock Lesnar and Goldberg by the end yeah. of the week. Oh my uh, God! <laughs> bringing back memories of Giant Gonzalez for you old school wrestling yep. fans, or the Great Kali. Right. Oh God, I suffered through a lot of Great Kali matches in my youth. Yeah, but at yeah. least he was a Punjabi playboy. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. And he we would... got the the Punjabi prison match out of that. Yeah, right. well, at least a Great Kali would rake in some females, you know, because he was a playboy. <laughs> I apologize to any big fans, but I've never heard of a boxer by the name of Ryan Garcia. Anybody? No, I have not. No, never not heard until... of the guy the story about him yesterday whoever he is uh, he's a somebody i guess because the dorks at tmz are talking about him that he even has the nickname king ryan can you imagine your nickname is king and no one's heard of you uh, that doesn't <laughs> that would suck. uh his social media uh page is what everyone's talking about he claims he's handing out pla- plastic surgery procedures like it's halloween candy uh he wants to buy uh, women bolt-ons and Brazilian butt lifts. Oh, that's <laughs> nice of him. Yeah, that's a very nice gesture. He said on, uh, what do you call it, Twitter, I'm giving out free BBLs, Randy Shaver. That, that stands for Brazilian butt lift. <laughs> and boob jobs, hit me up. No weird stuff. Just out here supporting women. I love <laughs> and support all the women in the world. Ski. I guess he was inspired because women were asking him Quite often, they 
good into his direct messages and say, hey, would you uh, pay for this for me? Would you do that? And so we decided, all right, fine, I'll just offer it to everybody. <laughs> That's very nice of him, but who hits up a complete stranger? Well, what am I saying? It's 2024. Yeah. There are people out there who hit up complete strangers on the social media and say, can I have 10 grand? Yeah. I mean, it sounds like that's what was happening here. What is wrong with us? Well, Randy, so long, NFL. <laughs> you talking about the the change in the tackle rule? It's a damn shame what's become of you, NFL, because you were so much fun at one point. <laughs> Give them the flags. Yep. It's right. It's time for flag football. Yeah. Is that what JJ Watt said? Yeah, it was. Yep. We're getting yep. closer. Uh, the NFL has officially banned what well, more or less tackling. But they say, in specifics, hip drop tackles. Now, that is where you grab a, a, God forbid, you grab a player with the football around the waist. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Well, he could be injured. Right right from the get-go there, there's danger. The guy could be injured. You've you've put your hands on a a football player. I mean, I I do understand in some ways. No, you don't. Yes, I do. What they're trying to do. (laughs) Because that kind of injury, I mean, we've seen it happen where guys have gotten hurt and and yes you know, pretty it's a bad contact sport it is you you're can right. be hurt you're right that's what aggravates me is nowadays it's it's this constant battle to try and attempt something that's on it to try to attain yes. something that's unattainable we the nfl wants to try and make it so no one is ever hurt ever I mean, I think they've done a decent job of trying to take the head out of the game, and I think that's that's certainly warranted. There's no doubt about that's warranted. Sounds this like marriage. A, this one's a little bit different in that in, took in the head out right, of the game. How Probably. do you take away someone tackling a guy when they're chasing them down from behind? Right. That. How do you do that? And I don't know if this is going to be something that is going to succeed or not. Certainly. If you read a lot of the comments on social yesterday from players, they weren't asked about this. (laughs) They're pissed off. Yeah, Yeah, they are. They They weren't surprised. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I I understand the the, what they're trying to accomplish, but it doesn't make a lot of sense really in the context of of the game. It is so silly. And if you're sitting there going, "Well, what the hell is a hip? uh, What did I call it? Hip drop tackle. Hip drop tackle." It's when you wrap your, again, not trying to scare anybody, but yeah, you wrap your arms around the player and then you use your body weight to drop that player to the ground. It's kind of like your kind of like a, a like a rodeo. Yeah, when you're going to when yeah. you're going to when you would do the whatever they call where you you grab the the steer and pull them down. Yeah. Not a steer, but a, a younger. We know what you animal. mean. We know what you mean. Calf. Calf. Yeah. It's kind of the same concept. It's just so silly. Just but, forget mean, it and play flag football. If you're a cornerback, how do you tackle someone you don't. like you don't. Gronk? You don't. Like, yeah. you can't tackle a tight end. If I was an NFL you GM don't. right now, I would never draft a defensive player again or sign. Just try to score 80 points a game and hope the defense can hold the other team to 75. <laughs> Yeah, at this point, you might as well you just tackle them and then just take the penalty or the fine. That's all you really can do. Now, the dude uh, who runs the players' uh, committee... Troy Vincent. He said, at least for now, he thinks it's not going to result in on-field penalties. It will be fines and warnings. But still, it, that's just, what is it, March? So, uh, you know, things could change. It's just so silly. Um, and this has been going on for years, and it's part of what has slowly diminished my interest in the NFL. The game is so slighted what's the word the game is so i'll go with slighted in favor of the offense you just cannot do a damn wow. thing on defense anymore you cannot do anything and it sucks yeah uh oh oh and here here's more good news there's going to be more coaches challenges next year <laughs> yay <laughs> more stoppages four hour games <laughs> take the drama out of exciting plays <laughs> That's what we need more of. We need a great play, but then we don't know if it really was legal. We're yeah. going to watch some video for a while. More but challenges. It's such a buzzkill when your favorite team makes a big play, and you're like, well, they're going to review that, so it's not to get excited yet. It's the friggin' worst. Well, but they're not going to ban the tush push just yet, Randy Shaver. Well, good. You can still grab your quarterback by the ass cheeks and throw him over the <laughs> line of scrimmage. Nothing better. 
Oh, I don't know. You know, the Eagles are going to have to get a good center. With Kelsey going to be gone. Shut up. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Hot take there. <laughs> it's a hostile work environment. <laughs> Just wow. shut your mouth. Wow. Will do. That's not even the annoying Kelsey. That's the cool Kelsey. <laughs> yeah. Stop talking about anything called Kelsey. Don't act like... Waffle, and you know what had me upset there for a minute? I'm sorry I blew up. I am. Look look into my eyes. Oh, it's all good. But you know what had me upset also, other than you said the dirty K word? Yeah. Is you you at you went back after what we just talked about? You went and acted like this was still a real sport. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> you, you did. You asked I, a you asked a personnel question, and you, you can't do that anymore. It's not a real sport anymore. Yeah, I see where my flaws are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> I get it. We could probably point out a few you weren't aware of. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I'm aware of them. Oh my god! It wasn't you. Had anybody said what you said a minute ago, I also would have told them to shut up because you acted like it was a real sport. I get it. I get it. <laughs> We'll have a joint and whatnot here in a minute. We'll we'll calm this down. Cool. Me and you smoking a J. Down. You want to smoke a big fat joint with uh, with Daddy? Yeah. I'm always in. I don't know if this will do anything for you. A website called SB Nation put this here together for you. The problem is you have to be able to see these pictures and know who these people are to fully get the joke. So every year they take an NFL coach's photo. <laughs> All right. And then they pick on these guys for their appearance, oh, their, yeah. their clothing, their facial expression. So that's it's not perfect for radio. So I'll throw a few of these jokes at you. Um, uh, the ones that I, I believe you know, you can picture. Um, they, they look at the NFL yearly coaches photo, which they took somewhere the other day. Who cares? It's a, it's a dead sport. <laughs> um. So here are the ones I think you might recognize and be aware of what they look like. Mike McDaniel, the head coach of what used to be the Miami Dolphins. Okay, everyone remember what he looks like? Yes. yes. Yeah. He yeah, kind of looks like guy, the, the skinny 27-year-old of, he's sucking on a vape rod outside of a hip uh, nightclub. Saw a lot of him on Hard Knocks. Very familiar. In the NFL coaches' photo, they say that Mike McDaniel looks like he lists DJ on his tax return but actually makes his money selling drugs. <laughs> That's a good description. Yeah, yeah. It is. My stepdaughter, yeah. I thought, had a good one, too, when she said that he kind of looks like a kid that was really unpopular in high school, except the cool kids hung out with him because he had a pool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. Jim Harbaugh, he looks like at a... <laughs> He looks oh, like boy. a pastor at a Midwest mega church. <laughs> That's funny. That is absolutely perfect. Uh, and you probably could spot Jim Harbaugh yes. at a mega yeah. church. Yes. Andy Reid looks like the owner of the best shaved ice truck in the lower 48 states. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see him as an ice cream man or something like that. Uh. Five bucks. Shaved ice. Five bucks. Dan Campbell looks like a ham tester. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> That's a job. He, te- I, he tests ham. I want that job. Ugh. I love ham. What is this, honey baked? That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got next? Oh, look. Some kind of Cajun? Uh, Matt LaFleur, the head coach, I think, of what used to be the Green Bay Packers. He looks like he coaches a 12 and under girls soccer team and has struck out with every mom of the group. (laughs) And finally, our guy here, Conrad O'Connor. He looks like the 10th grade history teacher who cooks the young kids in the student versus teachers basketball game. Wrap it up, Cubby. That's right. Boom. Vince Young got knocked out in a bar fight. Oh, that looks yeah, bad. That wasn't good. That's on 93x.com. Former NFL quarterback of the former NFL uh, got knocked out. Uh, Vince Young, he got knocked out in a bar fight, Randy Shaver. Someone cheap shot at him right in the yapper. Caught him when he wasn't looking? Yeah, or? he yeah, wasn't looking. Such a cheap oh, shot. Cheap shot. Right in the friggin' yizap. That's not fair. No. <laughs> Doesn't he have the distinction of having like the lowest Wonderlick score of any yeah. NFL yeah. player? That was the story. You know, someone asked him, you know, yeah. Remember the old Wonderlick test they used to talk about in oh, the yeah. NFL, yeah. Randy yeah. Shaver? Yeah. 
you know, they're, and they're, I don't know. That was the rumor going around. And then I remember looking up the Wonderlick test, and I don't know. I, to me, I, I just think some of these guys didn't even bother making an effort because they were big stars. Yeah, I'm sure you didn't. Yeah. Getting I, over you're, it. You're yeah. not going to draft me because I said four plus four is jello. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, they're going to put you on the ball club. So there you go. Randy, I don't know what got into me. I did a lot of shouting. It's not like you to blow up. Uh, shouting at Wapple, too. That's yeah. No, no, we're, hey, we're, we're past that. We, we went past that. I he already it. lit the joint. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he already lit the joint. It was my fault. Don't I, bring up old oh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's, he's, yeah. <laughs> Why you always got to bring up old stuff, Randy? It was my fault. I shouldn't ask personnel questions and bring up the big K. <laughs> right. Not oh no, not when it's a. Uh, you sound like a broken man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just defeated. No no no, it's, it's my fault. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I got him right where I want him now. <laughs> Randy, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Sounds good. All right. Half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. Ninety-three X. Grace here, customer service rep at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Our customers are our top priority, whether that's providing same-day service or solving a cooling issue for that addition on your home. Ashley, tell our listeners about this month's AC specials. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now. Business has always been about to... Dr. P. Jesus. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Ah, even with this awful weather, our guy made it. Welcome to the program to Dr. James Parnell. He can go ahead and help you out if you have a question about your overall health. The number here, 651-989-9393. Dr. P, part-time doctor, part-time stunt driver, huh? Pretty bad out there. Yeah, I was, I'm real happy to have not been one of those spin-out slash crashes. Did you uh, see a few of those on your way you in? You know, I actually didn't, but okay. I, I did slide a few feet as I was coming to a, to a stop sign, which was very reminiscent of me doing the same thing on my way here like five years ago. <laughs> yeah, and you, took out, oh, no. you yeah. took out your car and a stop sign. Yeah, yeah, I left a little bit of radiator fluid everywhere. So yeah, Ooh. so yeah, what was ah, I thinking? I boy, that sucks. Well, um, you are a good friend thank for coming you. in. And, okay, so I'm going to get this out of the way quick. I am literally exhausted. What's going on? Because my puppy volunteer thing has gone out of control. Now, uh, puppy volunteer? Last thing? time you were on, you mentioned you right, are like, involved now yeah. with a, a rescue. Right, so I'm going to mention it again because I really need help now. Warrior Dog Rescue, like W-A-R-R-I-O-R, Dog Rescue in Savage. Great place. It doesn't have anything to do with the military. You did ask me that last time. Um, I think it, it, it was named thinking of the fighting spirit of you know these small animals. Sure. But I, I went from going and hanging out with puppies to, okay, I guess I could take a puppy as a foster. And then, okay, I guess I could take its sibling. Okay, I guess I could have three. Oh, no. Uh, so anyway, I have had, I ha- I've had three. Well, sorry. Started with one. That one got adopted quick. Now I have two. Okay. Um, and two they need, puppies they need homes. They're cute as, cute as all heck. Yeah. yeah Dr. Um, P sent me some photos, and they, these are some cute puppies. Yeah. F- so uh, you're looking to get rid of these dogs. That, yeah. I mean, they need, a, they need a good home. It's the, the Finding Nemo litter. So I had uh, Flo initially. Uh, I now have Dory and her brother Squirt. Okay. Um, Squirt is to die for. Yeah. Uh, there were sort of, I don't know, they're like Chihuahua, Terrier mixes. Um, one thing I didn't realize is that female dogs can actually um, give birth to a litter from more than one male at the same time. Really? Whoa. There's promiscuous yes. dogs Whoa. out there? Uh, I, think, nice. I, think, I think a dog in heat is a promiscuous dog. But yeah, so yeah. I had. <laughs> These a, puppies are already pregnant? No, 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 they just, they don't, uh, sorry, they this don't, is just they, a fact you learned yes, about because this. they look very different, I didn't get to that part, uh, oh. Dory looks like a Chihuahua Terrier, Squirt looks almost like a lab, wow, so terrier. they, these two puppies came from the same litter, but different dads, it would certainly appear so, F me running but sideways, scandalous. I've never heard of something like that, yeah, but there's also lots of other beautiful, lovely dogs, who are, these are 13, almost 14 weeks old, uh, but they've got plenty of adults too, so seriously, if people are looking for dogs, the woman who runs this place is amazing. Um, these dogs come from Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the Finding Nemo litter was 
literally an hour away from being taken to a kill shelter when oh. the people down there rescued him and got him brought up here uh, just less than a month ago. Is there a website or something we can link to? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I gave it to Ashley. Warrior Dog okay. Rescue. Um, but yeah, p- please take a look, everyone. Uh, and there's a, there's adoption events pretty much every weekend. What about uh, if you want to foster Double D's Jesus is interested? Absolutely, yeah. Sign up, or you you know you can you can be a volunteer, go hang out with puppies. You can sign up to be a volunteer. Uh, I'm sorry, to sign up to be a foster. Um, and they are, you know, it's a very it, it's impressive actually. You know, they they do they vet everyone who gets involved. Vet, not as in going to the vet, <laughs> right? Right. But um, but they I mean, understand. They yeah, they they literally you know have you give references that you do like sort of a, a virtual home visit. Those um, rescues are good at that kind of stuff. Yeah, very, I mean, they, you know, they want these puppies to find a home and stay there. So. I got my the- wife and I went through the adoption process like for a human being. And yeah. it was easier than when we got our most recent <laughs> dog. I mean, it was less invasive than when we got our... No, it's our- kind of crazy. I mean, if you think about it, right? Like, you can get married, you can get a driver's license, you can do all sorts of stuff um, without any intervention. And, yeah, if you want to re- or adopt a dog from a place like this, they, they check you out better. I got something cooking at the house uh, as well, Dr. P. We got a puppy at the house that we are fostering in possible preparation mm. for keeping. Nice. The little uh, character. It's a, It's a hell of a lot of fun. Hell of a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, and you know what? Okay, one more note on this fostering pets. Uh, I've been in the situation a couple times where the individual from the fostering place, whatever you call it, they come to look at your home mm-hmm. and meet you to make sure you are right sure. to foster an animal. And you know what a couple of them have said to me? They've said, you'd be surprised how many people think that they can foster a pet while living in an absolute garbage pile. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, they said... You know, they, you know, because I keep my place fairly neat because right. of my OCD. And they said, you know, when they walked in, you could, they immediately knew, okay, this is going to be fine. They said so many times there are people who just think, yeah, I'll take that dog. And they live in like this garbage, but anyway. Right, yeah. uh, right, right. You can't, even, you can't even take care of yourself for Christ's sake. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, do a hard pass on you. As, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. P. Did they, did they get into your financials and all that kind of stuff? Oh, and, if they did, they asked the friggin' wife those oh, questions. I wasn't sure involved you can in the, afford the dog food. I, uh, I don't know if they got financial on my ass. Oh, man, it was a lot of stuff. But yeah. here we go. We got Dr. P. Yeah. Jesus. We should answer medical questions. He drove people. through We've the store. Few. And the ice and everything to be here. Yes, we are, we're looking for questions where listeners might need a little advice. Barsaw Jesus wants to know. He's 32. Uh, he used to be able to eat spicy food as much as he wanted. No issues. But now he said if he even smells a jalapeno, he has to take up residence on the toilet for a few hours. <laughs> what gives? Sometimes I think there's a time limit on that. When you're a young person, you can just devour all that hot spicy stuff you get a little mm-hmm. older and your stomach says no effing way yeah that's interesting i mean I, you know the, like there's with, an age limit yeah um so like dairy allergy is definitely something that can evolve during a person's life mm-hmm. because it truly has to do with um the presence of like an enzyme in the small intestine that can break down uh lactose which is milk sugar and if you start to lose that enzyme which is actually very common in sort of um, Scandinavian heritage, which there's a lot of people in Minnesota that have that. So that that's something that can get Freak. worse over time. But yeah, spicy food intolerance. I can't think of anything. I mean, there's there's no analogous thing with like, you know, losing an enzyme. I think it could be one of two big things. One might be maybe you, you overdid it one time or a few times and you just have this association, you know, where it's almost like you've a Pavlovian response, like, oh God, I, I'm smelling these peppers again. It's gonna burn. I'm, I'm, you know, you're, you just sort of have a reaction to it, um, uh, more like a psychological association. Uh, that maybe the other thing would be if, you know, you just live in a different lifestyle when you're younger. Depending how young you are talking, um, maybe you weren't drinking and smoking or whatever. If, if you're someone who has acid reflux because of your lifestyle, either you're overweight. You drink too much, mm-hmm. various things. Then all the fun stuff. Yeah, then you you know you're gonna have, you're gonna have a lower tolerance probably for uh, putting jalapenos into that. Okay, mix. okay. You kind of like it's like dumping, uh, you know, it's like a gas on the fire. Ga- exactly, gas on the. That's a perfect uh, uh, 
comparison. Uh, how do you think you would do Dr. P in a hot wing showdown? Mm. Uh, I want to know how you think you'd do on game day up against an opponent and then how you would do the next day. Um, I mean, if I was if I was doing it against like a toddler, I'd probably do okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, like a kid who could kind of barely Yeah, eat. me too. I, I, I would be the worst. Yeah. Yeah. The you know, worst. You'd, you'd want our, uh, my wife to represent us if we ever had to put a team together. Seriously? Yeah. She is like known for it amongst her friends. The spicy part, or the can like win a competition part. Well, the spicy you know. part. Okay. No, I don't. I don't tolerate. This. And then she can win notice? a competition for messiest car. But if we <laughs> ever had a competition <laughs> for eating spicy foods, I think she'd do very, very well. You, you mentioned before that the wife can handle spicy foods. Now, do you notice the next day that she disappears for an hour and a half? Nothing like that. No. And walks around with a can of Lysol uh, in her back pocket. <laughs> she only had a bad tummy once, and that was from that uh, the spicy chip challenge. Oh, but well, this is true. I was at, we were at a Thai restaurant, and she ordered like the extra hot with extra, right? right? right. They throw in the, they said, one through five. She said, give me a ten. She wanted to double it up. One of the cooks came out to meet her. He was so, <laughs> so impressed. Awesome. Oh, wow. That's so cool. See, actually, now, that goes back to that uh, gas on the fire theory. It really yeah. does, because your wife is annoyingly healthy when it comes to her lifestyle. Yeah, she's so when a very she clean eats, eater. When she, it pisses everybody off. She doesn't know it, but it does. <laughs> oh, she knows it. She, uh, so when she <laughs> eats a, a double jalapeno Thai burger, it lands in this beautiful, serene pond of cleanliness in her stomach as opposed to when a you know a, a garbage pile human being like myself it lands in a cesspit of nonsense and <laughs> terrible you know what i'm talking you about you think the Ooh. coors light would dummy down the spice that's all that's in there uh, is this the liquor talking or the last time we had dr p in here did we talk about staph infections mm, I, I don't recall talking okay. about it i mean we if no one remembers yeah. it, then it must be the liquor talking. Yeah, but we I, certainly have talked about it before. Okay. Uh, a text from Jesus of Suburbia. Hmm. Nice. I don't know if he's playing with me because he mentions a scrotum. Oh. And that always makes me think that maybe someone's, you know, just trying to be cute. But it sounds pretty serious. He says, my dad currently has a staph infection, which is settled into his scrotum. Hmm. They have him on heavy antibiotics. He's obviously uncomfortable. What can he do to aviliate? Aviliate is in the word. <laughs> mm. What can he do to aviliate? That's twice. Ameliorate? Yes. <laughs> what can he do to ameliorate the pain? Oh, the pain. Okay. Um, okay, staph infection of the scrotum. That, I mean, that can be anything from something very superficial and not a big deal. Uh, so staph, Staphylococcus aureus is the... The broader name is is a really common bacteria. That and strep. Um, we think of strep throat, but strep is also has a bunch of varieties that can be on skin. So staph and strep, those are the most common things that cause you know a little uh, you to get um, uh, like a, a scratch that gets infected and gets some pus in it. Mm. Um, so it can be superficial, but you can also get much deeper infections or very resistant versions of particularly staph. MRSA is you know, something maybe people have heard of, and you, it's a methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Um, and that's a really bad thing to have because there's a very limited number of antibiotics that can treat it. So, um, so if it's just a superficial thing, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't think it'd be causing that much pain. Um, if it's a deeper infection that's much broader than, I mean, you would probably, as long as you're medically able to, taking Tylenol mm -hmm. and and Advil, um, uh, you can really do both because they're totally different types of medications, and those are, you know, that combination is a, is a strong, or is as strong as you can get over the counter. If he has a terrible, terrible infection that's being treated by um, antibiotics, then you know that may be a time that stronger, uh, like opioid. Uh, medications would be reasonable to use short term. Um, I mean, if it's, it may feel just very hot because it's of the infection. Yeah, you um, know, Jesus of suburbia got back and said to elaborate, his scrotum is red, it's inflamed, and mm -hmm. it's enlarged. Yeah, so I mean, you don't want to, you know, wanna, you don't want to put an ice pack necessarily right on your scrotum, but uh, having an ice pack with a, a thin, you know, 
cotton t-shirt between sure, it. I sure. mean, that, that will help just decrease the heat and yeah. the discomfort and the swelling. You'd think that would feel real good. Yeah. So, I mean, just, you know, don't freeze the skin or make it that uncomfortable. And, you know, Go out naked and sit on the sidewalk. I mean, yeah. I, honestly, if they, yeah, they could stand outside your building here and stand. So it's, <laughs> Wait, why our building? <laughs> oh, just because oh, just I, I was standing out the there other for a few minutes. naked folks in this area? <laughs> well, yeah, there were, there were was a line of naked people out there. It's a weird area. That's for <laughs> yeah. sure. I wonder if any dudes have dipped their nuts in a snowbank, you know what I mean? Just to alleviate. Oh, yeah, I've sure. seen it. I'm sure it's been done, like, at fish houses. I've stuff, seen it right? on a dare. I'll right. be damned. This person says, I've never had night sweats in my life uh, until about three months ago. They just started to get them, and they just turned 40, if that makes a difference. 40? Do they say if they're a, a male or female? No, I think that's a, a game. We have to decide. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I know. We actually did talk about night sweats last time, and it's... It's one of those things where it can be. Oh, it could be. The the list is so long of things that can cause it. Um, I know last time we talked about possibly sleep apnea causing night sweats just because you're sort of laboring to breathe at night. Um, I mean, there's a variety of infections. Like you know, the classic answer would be, well, you have tuberculosis. That's not a very common answer these days in modern society. But um, but basically, a chronic smoldering infection can cause. Night sweats, um, women who are approaching menopause, that's obviously um, mm-hmm. you know, a huge one. And at 40, that would be young. It's not impossible. Um, and uh, I think, I, actually, I know we talked about this last time just because I remember one of you mentioned, um, you know, it can be something associated with cancer, um, whether it's a lymphoma, a leukemia, or other, because I think somebody mentioned Randy Shaver had, that was one of his major symptoms when he was first diagnosed with uh, lymphoma he had. And li- listeners are texting in saying the same thing. Yeah, right. so it's it can be benign things, um, but, it, you know, it, it, we can't assume that. And so it, it is something that's good to get checked out. I, uh, can, I get night sweats when I eat before I go to bed. Yeah, something spicy. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter if it's spicy. It I'm the same yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. if oh, I eat really? before I go to bed, I yeah. sweat like crazy. I think huh. it's Sucks. because uh, my stomach's trying to metabolize all the food. Um, so that's why I get sweaty. That's a brilliant Tell us more. Term. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, doctor. Uh, no, no, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess I don't know why metabolizing itself would necessarily, but I mean, reflux can cause, you know, will cause irritation and uh, maybe some sweating. But I, just, right. I just always get so cold when I'm, after I eat. Like my body temperature drops, I feel like. That's what he feels like. He eats, yeah. oh, he eats exclusively ice cream, though. <laughs> Outside. And lots of it. We got Dr. P. Jesus in studio taking questions from our listening audience. How about a quick one before we go to break? Dr. P., I've got st- scabs, is how he says it. I've got scabs on my legs and arms and chest, and they bleed, and I can't see a dermatologist until August. <laughs> What the hell do I do? I know they wrote dematologist. Yeah, dematologist. But I thought I'd go with it. Uh, what the hell can he do? They said legs and what again? Legs, chest, arms, scabs. Oh. They bleed. What the hell is that? Well, I mean, scabs. Leprosy? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, right. That's one of those ones like tuberculosis. We don't drop as a diagnosis very often, but it could be. Um also known as Hansen's disease, leprosy. I did not know that. Yes, yes. Hmm. Um, I never heard that in the jokes. You know what I mean? The Hansen's disease? Yeah, they never mentioned Hansen's. Oh, yeah. No, in medical school, that was a big one. Yeah, oh, God, I bet. Yeah. I bet. Um, well, so scabs usually would be... I mean, the most common reason you have scabs is because you're scratching. You're picking you know, just a, a small area of skin, and it heals over. I mean, you could have bites that are leading to that. Oh, dude, like bugs in the bed. Mm-hmm. I mean, so that is you kind of wonder about. So yeah, looking for bed bugs. Um, fleas. F- <laughs> fleas is possible. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be less likely this time of year. How about like uh, a spider family that no. lives under his pillowcase Could or be, something? Yeah, yeah. Whole, I mean, those, you ever seen one of those things get birth? Bed Man, spiders? A million. Yeah, oh, bed that's spiders, terrible. Bed snakes, bed squirrels. That's how bed, I was. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but. Uh, I had uh, uh, an ex-girlfriend of mine, her mom, Mom got her to make her bed every morning by saying, "If you don't, spiders are going to get in there." And so she always made her bed. Wouldn't that be something her. to bring a woman back to your, you know, to her place? But you, you have to do it on the couch because she has bed squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so uh, so bed bugs though would be a big one. Oh, uh, dude, you have bed bugs. Possibly, and you can, you know, it's it's probably worth looking up online. Like, what are the signs of bed bugs? Because they're really small, but you can usually see evidence of them if you happen to have them in your bed, sort of. 
debris and gross stuff around the skirt of your bed. Um, sure. Scabies is a thing that could cause ah. itching all over. I just thought that was fake. I thought people always made that up. Scabies, no, that's a real thing. No, huh? it's, yeah, it's a little mite that you can get from other folks. I mean, usually you got to get it from direct contact with um, someone who has it or their clothing and stuff. That's, I don't, I'm trying to remember. Bed bugs you can clearly get from a hotel. I think scabies generally you don't. Um, uh, but, you know, then it could be a variety of other just irritation type um, allergen things that are causing itching. So mm-hmm. exposure to a food, to, uh, a, you know, a soap, um, yep. a uh, so fabric softener. Those are kind of the culprits. And it, it is very frustrating to get into a demilologist or a dermatologist <laughs> uh, these I've days, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had to wait almost a year. All yeah. Right, dude. Uh, but you can, you know, honestly, you don't have, uh, you know, in primary care, we, we see tons of um, skin stuff. And depending on what it looks like, um, we can usually narrow it down uh, and, and try some different things. Um, I mean, trying over the counter Benadryl is a simple way to say, does taking antihistamine, which decreases itching, help these clear up? Because if if you if you continue to scratch at these scabs, they're just going to persist. Fair uh, enough. And f- you know, the interesting one. I actually just was doing. I have to do a thing where every quarter of the year I answer these medical questions online as part of keeping your board certification. And one of them was on. Um, basically, there's a psychiatric illness where people think that they are infested by um, bugs of some ah. type. Ugh. And so they scratch their skin like crazy, and they, they can't stop. They can't stop. Um, so, so an antipsychotic would help this person possibly. But, dude, you might be crazy. Ch- or, be. or or but on maybe, meth. but maybe not. Or on meth. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck so, yeah. Plumber Jesus yeah. said scabies is hell. He has scars on his legs from scratching so hard. Oh. Yeah, I know it's totally real. So oh. the message was from Blacktop Mojo Mofo Jesus. Take a look around the house. Take a look at your bed. See what yep. you got cooking. Yep. Uh, and maybe uh, by the next time we talk to you. Uh, you won't be so scabby and bleedy. Yeah, and all but, that. but primary care, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, can can help narrow it down and go see and the try doctor. some treatments and possibly get you into the dermatologist. Quick, take a shower. Doctor P. Jesus, the ninety three X half assed morning show. Yeah, I hear you. Dr. James Parnell right there in the studio with the half ass Morning Show. We're going to try and get through another question or two from our listening audience. I imagine the way the roads are and the weather is, you're not in a terrible hurry to get back in your motor vehicle, are you, Dr. P? Uh, no, 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 no. Let's hit it. You yeah, got to yeah. go potty? No. You yeah. all right? Oh, wait, here, I'll just go on the floor. Ah, why not? Just yeah, like I mean, those puppies. The, the smell wouldn't one. change. Ooh, Here's yeah. an interesting question from a listener that yeah. was texted in by Damn It Was. Uh, they're claiming... That there is, that this is true. They're claiming that hairs grow longer and faster out of moles. Is that true, Dr. PG? Because they ask, is there a medical explanation for why hairs grow longer and faster out of a mole? Uh, that's a good question. Show them uh, that one, Ashley. Show them the one. Uh, <laughs> Show them how yeah, long that hair is. I just... I, yeah, and this may be one I'll have to look up. I, you see that one? Part of my sense. Yeah, oh man, wow. Oh, jeez, Ashley. I know. What it's the heck? Insane. You could oh. trim it. Uh, yeah. No, I like it. I mean, I, it looks like a fuse at the end of a firecracker. <laughs> it's my friend now. Oh. You know, part of it might simply be that uh, a hair coming out of a mole is quite noticeable. So, you know, you, yeah. I mean, if you think about the hair in your head, if you have to go get your hair cut every month, that means you're. Your hair is maybe growing a couple centimeters or more per month. Um, what if my head is just one giant mole? My God, look at all the hairs coming. <laughs> well, not as many as you want to do is just right. plant a bunch of moles on yeah. our heads. Yeah. Oh, oh, luscious yeah. hair. Yeah, or you just have one really long hair out of your head. Um, <laughs> so I don't, I don't know whether it's true. I all mean, right. it, the nature of those sorts of hairs is sort of funny. They tend to be sort of a, you know, a thicker hair. Usually they're quite dark. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I'll yeah. look that up. I, who, I would... who here has the most moles? I don't have a mole that I'm aware of. Yeah, I mean, neither. never had one. Yeah, and I, I welcome you all to check. No, yes, I don't think I. Have... <laughs> we could have a. Maybe we should have one of these segments where we just, you know, do, do a that. little mole check. I guess sure. I would say I have quite a few, but maybe I'm mistaking them as just like. I think those are tattoos, actually. <laughs> I don't think I have any source. moles. You think you have moles, Ashley? Yeah, I mean, where the not hell like are what they? I would think. Like, not the kind you see on, like, the movies. Like, no, like, Austin Powers-sized <laughs> mole, but... 
yeah. Um, um, like there, I do have a couple that like I've had checked out before. They're not they're not super raised, um, but just like a little bit and just a little bit bigger than the end of a pencil eraser. I only so, had one and I cut it off. And it oh. never came back. You literally did? Yeah, and I got yelled at by oh, the Oh, I thought that was a wart. Yeah, I did that to a wart. Yeah, I don't oh, think yeah, I that was a wart. Well, I don't know what it was. It was a wart or a mole. It must oh, have been a wart. Oh yeah, because they were going to freeze was, it off. It was your nipple. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> but it was the third one. Yeah, so I, I got I got four left. It was yeah. a combine. It was a warty mole. Mm. Mm. Custom Lighting Jesus said uh, he's never had this happen until Sunday. But he lifted something heavy and saw what he could only describe as glitter in his vision. Oh, he saw stars. Hmm. If it was okay. sp- sp- sparkly, yeah, some bitch saw stars. Yeah, I mean, that's that means you damn near passed out. I think. But, I mean, Nick's exactly right. That's, that's yeah. what I usually think of it as. It's sort of it's the blood flow to your brain is is transiently not quite enough. I, now I don't know. I don't know why that is. What we tend to. You sort of get those sort of starry, sparkly things. And yeah. If it keeps getting worse, then your vision starts to tunnel in, and then you go down. Down skis. Um, that would be the most likely thing. Um, I, uh, yeah. And they didn't say it. it yeah, it was, you almost passed out, bro. Just you had too much exertion? Yeah. Um, I mean, if you know, because if you... Uh, and there's all sorts of... It's actually pretty fascinating. If you... You know, bend down and try to lift something heavy. You're holding your breath, which actually there's there's all these mechanical things that happen where the blood in your legs is being sort of, is trying to push back up to your heart, but you're holding your diaphragm down, which is sort of preventing blood from flowing back to your heart. But you're compressing your chest, which is pushing blood up to your brain. I mean, it's amazing how many things actually can happen really quickly um but yeah it's, it does sound like uh, a pre syncopal episode is basically what i would describe it as um any concern n- no i mean if it if it just happened once Not and it was something really right. heavy uh you know the more common time i think people tend to have that is if you sex uh you could uh, i was actually just thinking of getting up from laying down to standing too quickly but <laughs> <laughs> that could qualify oh, I guess that's but sometimes you're that. standing at the you know so exactly. i guess it depends on what you're up right. to right that is a position but it's i was mostly just yeah so getting up too quickly because you're you're suddenly you know you're when you're laying flat your blood is not really fighting gravity particularly yeah this guy'll be all right yeah i he believe just so pushed a little too hard didn't he dr p yeah if if it keeps happening you know or if you if you get exertional headaches or um, you know, because you can get uh, sorry, like exertional migraine, and sometimes you can have an aura with that, which is sort of a similar sparkly thing, but typically it's going to lead to a headache. Um, so it's if it happened once, I wouldn't worry about it. If it's something that's recurrent, then, right? Yeah, looking into it. I remember Rick, uh, what's his name? Uh, Charlie Murphy said that Rick James had an aura about him. It was like an orange, like an aura. Kind of does have one. There's certain people that do. Maybe this is a quick one. Does lack of sleep lead to weight gain? This is from someone who has a six-month-old and a two-year-old doesn't get much more than five hours of uh, sleep a well, night. I suppose if uh, yeah, I, th- if I you think spend it- all those uh, hours uh, sitting at Subway, maybe I don't know, <laughs> right, or eating ice cream. Or, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there is. Yeah, uh, sleep deprivation and chronic fatigue um, can really mess up your metabolism um, and, and probably slow it down. Um, I mean, it definitely has all sorts of detrimental effects that. It you know it increases sort of stress. It's stress on your whole system. But yeah, I, obviously I think so. you haven't been sleeping well. No, yeah, you kind of said that, right? Look at you. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, does that mean I'm looking really, really fat? Is that what you're saying? I think he's saying you're fat. Yeah, <laughs> he could have just said it. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm gonna for, take that as you look P- like a million. Bucks. I look like I'm P H A T. No, 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 you're good. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the good kind of fat. You're the cool guy. Yeah, fat. Uh, no, no, but yes, I think it can slow down your metabolism. Totally. All right. Well, we ran smooth out of time, Doctor yeah. P. Nice work, fat Fatso. You did a good job. <laughs> Real good job. We'll get you. Oh. Look, somebody we, help me. Somebody, somebody adopt those puppies, please, so I can sleep again. <laughs> the doctor has puppies. Dory and Squirt. It. Dory and Squirt at Warrior Dog Rescue. Dory and Squirt. Yep. At uh, what? Warrior 
dog rescue. Oh, Warrior right. dog. And do we have that up on 93x.com? Yes, we do. Nice. nice. Very nice. Good yeah. luck with the puppies. And lots of other good puppies there, too. Don't just look at Dory. Of Understood. course. Understood. Drive safe. Please, everyone out there, drive yeah, safe. We're, we're getting texts yeah. from folks saying, you know, remind folks how bad it is out there. So oh, no. drive safe. Happy birthday to Edmund, turning the big 06 today. And happy birthday to Jared from Discovered Nod Read Jesus. The 93X Half-Ass Morning Show. 93X. The 93X Half-Ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Get started on your spring cleaning checklist now. With the weather warming up, it's the perfect time to get your AC tuned up with Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Get $40 off a furnace or AC tune-up or double your savings and get $80 off when you get them done at the same time. Visit standardheating.com to save now.